it appears that I need to educate you college students once again. Once again! God's forgiveness, forgiveness is conditional. Conditional! Yes. God does not forgive everybody. Why not? That would, that would be dumb. That would be dumb, he says. That would be dumb. That would be dumb. I did not read of the word dumb in the Bible. Yes, it's in there. Where? The, the deaf, dumb, and blind. No, but that's a different sense. The dumb can't speak. Different sense of the word, so does that. You will sin to the day you die. No, you're, you've been lied to. Who told you that? Your pastor? Yes. You don't have to sin every day of your life. You don't have to sin until you die. You this girl a whore. You don't even know her. I still. I all. No, I did not actually. I did not call her a whore. I said, if you recall, I said this girl smokes marijuana and she has a belly shirt. How do you know? And then when she said she's a business major. I, I asked a question. I said, I said, what biz? I said, what business are you gonna get into, porno? Question mark. I don't, I don't want to be accusational. I asked her a question. Hey sir, do you remember? Do you remember when uh, the woman? God said, well, he without sin cast the first stone. Yes. He didn't go to that girl and say, you're a slut, you make porno like. I didn't say that, I asked her. It was an honest inquiry. I believe in Christ, and you do too. But what else did? I'm so happy to see you here, praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you, hallelujah. What else did Jesus say to that woman? He said, go and sin no more. No one she was going to sin more. No, 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 you added that. You're adding that. She's not perfect. You can be perfect. What sin can't you stop doing? What sin? Which one? Living. Living's not a sin. Jesus was alive. He no, is alive. As long as we live, we're if living is a sin, the resurrection was a sin. Get it angry. Resurrection is a sin. God is angry. Ang the Bible says, be angry and sin not. But Anger is not a sin. I'm angry at the devil. When I read the news and I hear about the rapes, the murders, the molestations, I get angry. And I'm just reading the highlights. God sees it all. And God is more angry than I am. Anger is not a sin in and of itself. There's not a single sin you can't stop doing. There's not a single sin Jesus Christ can't save you from. The power of His grace is greater than the power of sin. By the grace of God and your free will, you can overcome the devil, overcome the world, overcome the flesh, overcome sin. All right. Well, uh, Jesse Morrell here, and I'm at Florida International University uh, in Miami. It's been uh, a few years since I've been here. Uh, last time I preached uh, here was very good. Uh, I was attacked by one woman who just uh, clawed me everywhere. I lost a shirt button. I, uh, my watch was broken. My sandwich board was broken. I had uh, scratches on my eyelids. Uh, hopefully, I won't get attacked. Uh, you know, uh, this time around. I'm in their fountain area. This is their free speech area. Found some nice shade to preach under because uh, I'm going to be preaching for quite a few hours. So being in the shade helps. And uh, I was mindful of the students and I picked a spot that has a, a staircase and some walls so that they'll have a place to sit in the shade as well. Uh, if I expect them to gather for hours at a time, you know, I want to have a, a good uh, shaded, uh, seated accommodations for them. And so uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how today goes. So I'm out here today with the Bible to preach the Word of God on this campus because I know this campus is full of sin, sin, sin. In fact, just yesterday I went out there, South Beach, to the pervert parade. And you know who I saw in the pervert parade? FIU students, lots of them, they were marching in the pervert parade. So you know what that tells me? That tells me that many of you FIU students must be perverts. 
because only perverts march in the pervert parade. So I'm out here with the Bible to confront your sin, to rebuke your sin, to warn you about your sin. And I'm sure that's not the only sin on this campus. One of the major sins on a university college campus is whorish behavior. Universities and colleges are full of whores and whoremongerers. It's true. Whores and whoremongerers dominate university campuses. Now by a whore, I'm not talking about prostitutes who charge. I'm also referring to the sorority girls who give it away for free. And by a whoremongerer, I'm not just talking about a man who hires the prostitute. A whoremongerer is one of these frat boys who's having premarital sex with one of these sorority girls. That's what the Bible means by whore and whoremongerer. Someone who is involved in sexual immorality. And universities and colleges are known for it. As a matter of fact, did you know that one in three college students has an STD? One in three. You know what that means? That means God is so fed up with all of your whoremongering and whorish behavior that God has actually cursed your genitals with a disease. God actually curses your genitals with a disease. Maybe he strikes you with gonorrhea. Maybe he curses you with syphilis or genital herpes. Is that your curse? Yeah. Yeah. That's how fed up God is, the sexual immorality of universities and colleges that now universities and colleges have an epidemic of STDs. How, what STD do you have? Scholarship form. A scholarship form? I'm from Panther Camp. Uh -huh. And um, we're having a scholarship form. Right? Okay. And I would like you to come. Well, when's the date and time? It's Friday. Oh, I'm not going to be here. Oh, okay. well, I'm here. Uh, we're having a thing all week, so there's yeah. like different events all week. I, I fly out. out on Wednesday. Okay, I have oh, an alternative so you for to you. Chipotle too. That's yeah. Yeah. Well, I have you come out to our stuff. We yeah. have stuff today, tomorrow. Well, I'll slide in the front of GC. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah in the Betty Chapel. And you guys can, and you can come out and help us out, donate, do whatever you can. Uh huh. And it would help out for people who, um, for incoming freshmen who are. Yeah, to tell to you the truth, I don't want to pay for anyone to be educated here. Right. No. Not at all. Not being kind of I would not pay a penny for anyone to be educated here. Why not? Well, kind of important. Because of all the whores and whoremongerers on this campus, not to mention wait, wait, can I explain something? there were there were lots of college students from this campus right, yesterday right, 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 marching right, right, right. in the pervert parade at South Beach. I wasn't there, but let me tell you something. And there you're supporting this whores. campus. There aren't any whores or sluts at Panther Camp. I can assure you that. Are that's you why, sure? That's why we are here trying to make sure. Are you a virgin? Are you a virgin? Yes, sir. Are you a virgin? Of course. Very good. I don't like girls. Are you a homosexual? No, I just choose to play, pay attention to proper things like God and Panther Camp. Are you a Christian? Yes. All right, good. Keep it up. All right, so... Because these whores on campus will try to seduce a man like you. Oh, really? They'll find out you have the, B, the big V on your back. Oh, yeah. And they're going to want to relieve you of it. Oh. So you need to watch out here at FIU. Oh, really? Yes. No these, way. Yeah, these horny sorority girls, no uh, no, they no, no, would no, no, be attracted no. to a virgin like you because they know you're STD free. All these other boys are really? so STD stricken that they'll want to go after a virgin like you. Wait, I have a question though. Well, what if I want to stay a virgin forever? Well, that would be wonderful. I would encourage that. No, I'm married. I, I have children. I want to populate the world with people like me. Where are you from? 
Uh, originally Connecticut. Connecticut. I flew here from Texas. Are there, are there virgins in Connecticut that are still? Ah, uh, not many. No, there's not many virgins in Connecticut. There in Connecticut. There's lots of whores. Why aren't you talking about the whores in Connecticut? Oh, I preach there. Yukon, Yale, uh, Central. Are they fine whores? Let's be real here. Why Let's would you real. ask a virgin like you, a pure man that wants to be celibate, why would you I'm ask a question like that? You know? Yeah, well, I, I will I will help you overcome your temptation and not answer that question. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, yes. girls are not yeah, they're not. They're actually really nice. The sorority people. girls on this campus are virgins. Yes. yes. I can, oh, for sure, them. yes. Oh, my I, God. I, have, I have my suspicions. Oh, no, trust me. I tried. No, it's, I especially it. seeing everyone at the pervert parade yesterday. I wasn't there. I was at Panama City. There were, there were lots of college okay. students marching in the pervert parade at South Beach. Right, right, right. right. And, uh, there were also a lot of students. Of course, I was... I was, I admitted I was also at the parade. Oh, so you were at oh, the so parade. parade. But I was with my banner and Bible and uh, my amplifier, I was preaching. So you were at the pervert parade? I was at the pervert parade, right. but I was not How supporting was it. The, the FIU students yesterday were supporting it. You were there. I was there, that's All right. correct. Okay. Alright, All right. I hope to see you later on this week. So. Hey, what time does class change? Every hour? Um, we don't know. It's, it's different. It's different. I don't go here. You're not even a student here? No. Oh, well that's good. I encourage you not to enroll here. Because I think they're going to try and brainwash your mind oh, yeah. with sexual perversions. Like wicked, wicked, wicked. That is what FIU is. Wicked, wicked, wicked. And the Bible says that God is calling all men everywhere to repent because he's appointed a day when he will judge the world in righteousness by the man Jesus Christ. I think it would be wise to save the battery in my voice for the class change. So the Bible says, be not deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And right here at FIU, there's a lot of unrighteous sinners. Many of you are living unrighteous, sinful lives. For example, the Bible says that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, how many of you were going out this past Friday night, Saturday night, using your weekend to party hardy, to get wasted on alcohol? This man over there, Exhibit A, over there, Exhibit A, well, the Bible says you're unrighteous and you will not inherit the kingdom of God you know what that means? It means you go to hell. Now, uh, I, I admit, I used to be a drunkard. I used to get drunk every night. You know, I, by the time I was 13 years old, I was puffing on blunts and sipping on gin and juice with my mind on my money and my money on my mind. I was living the, uh, the sinful life, the thug life. Uh, but Jesus Christ changed my life. And he's done a wo wonderful work in my heart. I was born again. And any of you drunkards on this campus are on your way to hell unless you're born again. Unless you change your ways. And the Bible says you're supposed to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And when you're drinking your jello shots and doing your keg stands and your beer funnels and shotguns, you are not loving God with all of your mind. So it's a sin. It's a violation of the greatest commandment. The greatest commandment. And if you violate the greatest commandment, you make yourself the greatest sinner. And uh, 
That's not the only way to violate the great commandment. How many of you smoke the wacky tobacco? I'm sure it's quite a few on this campus. After all, we're in Miami. Hey, dear. Oh, I'm preaching. Bye. Yes, smoking marijuana. You know, Miami is, Miami is known for drugs. Uh, Miami is known for, uh, you know, the criminal underworld. I mean, you know, it's really, uh, really exemplified in the movie Scarface. Uh, you see the drug culture uh, going back in Miami to the 70s and the, you know, Cuban immigrants like Scarface and the, all the drug epidemic here in Miami. Wicked, wicked, wicked. That's what Miami is. You get high on marijuana, you get high on drugs, you're not loving God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So you violate the greatest commandment. That makes you a sinner. Any of you potheads are sinners. Any of you drunkards are sinners. And as I said earlier, yesterday I went down to South Beach to the pervert parade. How many of you were out there yesterday at the pervert parade? Because I saw lots of people walking around with shirts that said FIU Pride. A lot of FIU students were at South Beach at the pervert parade. So that just goes to show how wicked this campus is. How wicked many of you college students are. Who said yeah? Were you there yesterday at the pervert parade? Uh-huh. Another problem in Miami, especially universities, is whores and whoremongerers. Now, let me define my terms. Does anyone know what a whore is? Anyone have any idea? You don't know what a whore is? Right, allow, me to, allow me to educate you college students and enlighten your mind. A uh, whore is not just some vulgar word or a curse word. Whore is a biblical word. And uh, in the Greek, uh, the word whore comes from the word uh, uh, porne. Porne means whore. Uh, pornos means whoremongerer, and pornea means, uh, you know, whorish, or fornication. Now, a whore, or porne, it's the feminine, uh, you know, counterpart of pornos. A whore is any woman that involves herself in, in, uh, Premarital or extramarital intercourse. That's, that's fornication. And I know many of you FIU girls are not virgins anymore. In fact, many of you lost your virginity before you even got to college, before you even enrolled at university. Girls are losing their virginity in high school. Girls are losing their virginity in middle school. Some girls are even losing their virginity in elementary school. What about kindergarten? Well, yeah, there is, you know, there is child molestation and rape. Yeah, I imagine that happens, unfortunately. But I'm talking about those who give it away on purpose. You know, premeditated sin. And uh, the Bible says 
that horse whoremongers are in big, big trouble with God. And as I said earlier, one in three college students has an STD. One in three. So everybody look to your left, look to your right. It might be you. It might be you. Yes. You know what STDs are? God's curse on your genitals. That's what STDs are. God's curse on your genitals. God sees all the whorish behavior you college students are involved in. And God from heaven says, curse you genitals. Curse you genitals. And he strikes you with gonorrhea and syphilis and genital heartbeats and HIV. God curses you with STDs. I commend you for being a Jew in public. Be a Jew for Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus was Jewish. The New Testament was written by Jews. Hallelujah. Okay, back to whores and whoremongers. So a whore is not merely a girl who charges, but a girl who gives it away for free. You don't have to charge to be a whore. Just give it away for free. You know, your, your virginity ought to cost something. It ought to cost marriage. A, uh, a lifelong commitment in holy matrimony. Uh, that's what your hymen is worth, girls. That's the value of your hymen. But for you girls that are having premarital sex, you're cheaper than a prostitute. You're cheaper than a prostitute. And I have no doubt that, it, you know, it must be pretty difficult for a pimp to run a brothel here in Miami with all the sorority girls on campus. It must be very hard, you sorority girls, put the prostitutes right out of business because you're so cheap. So cheap. You know, uh, allow, me to, allow me to tell you a story. This is the story of Slutty Sarah. And uh, Slutty Sarah was a student here at F. I, you. And, uh, you know, she, uh, she was not waiting for marriage. She was not waiting for, uh, you know, holy matrimony when they say you may now kiss the bride uh, in the honeymoon. No, but, you know, slutty Sarah had standards. She did. She had standards. You see, if she went out to the bars and clubs and a man offered to buy her a free drink, and ladies, those free drinks, they're not free. They're not. Those men, those boys are trying to get in your pants. They're trying to get you drunk to get your pants off. Well, uh, slutty Sarah knew the routine. And if a man came and offered her a free drink, she would take it. And if he was good looking, she would have sex with him. Yeah, yeah so she had standards. If he was good looking, if he was hot enough, if a... Uh, if his appearance was sexually stimulating to her hormonal body, then she would have sex with him. Well, uh, slutty Sarah ended up becoming STD-stricken Sarah. Say again. 
This guy said, shut the F up. Yeah. Why are you so intolerant? intolerant? You told me to shut up. That's intolerant. Well, no, that means I can talk. Yeah, well, you, look, you're at college. Learn to articulate yourself with an intelligent vocabulary. Yeah, you just yelled at me. You said, shut the F up. So you not only spoke with dumb language, you were yelling in an intolerant manner. You're saying that it's dumb language. Well, it is, yeah. It's filthy language. I mean, that, that's the language of gangster rappers. The F word. No, you cuss like a gangster rapper. I'm just saying, you're at college. Learn to articulate yourself with an intelligent vocabulary. You, you know, you said the F word. Well, yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Slut, is a, slut was an adequate word to describe Sarah. Uh, you can call her a whore. I don't care what you call a her. A whore is maybe more biblical. And that is the topic of discussion out here. Whores and whoremongers. Whores. Monger, it's like a fish, fishmonger. Well, fishmonger is a man who mongers fish. Uh -huh. A whoremonger is a man who mongers whores. But why you do got you that? Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. Well, why do I care? That's a good yeah. question. Okay, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Saint Jesse. And uh, being the loving, benevolent guy that I am, I don't want you girls to be like STD stricken slutty Sarah. Jesse. I want you to become uh, uh, hey, good girls. Did you talk to me? No, uh, we're, we're having a public discussion. Uh, no, we're not. We're right. Right. Well, well, then you're in the wrong place. So the Bible says... What do you mean I'm in the wrong place? Well, this is a public forum for public discussion. Are we not having a conversation? Not a private one. We're not having a, a public conversation? We're having a public one. Are you having it with me or are you yeah. having it with someone else? I know what's wrong. I have a suspicion about you. Uh, there's no suspicion. Are you a virgin? I'm asking you. Are you a virgin? There's no need to slander, Jesse. There's no need to slander. I'm not slandering, yeah, but I, I think you were offended at my story about slutty Sarah because maybe you could relate to the story. Have you had premarital sex? No, I have not. By choice or by necessity? I have not had premarital sex. By choice? Or by, you know, necessity. I generally don't care. Well, it matters. Uh, this man is a virgin, but he won't, he won't foreclose whether it's by choice or by necessity. He won't tell me. Uh, but, you know, with all the college girls on this campus, I'm sure you could find one. But you know what the worst me, STD of all is? Sexually transmitted damnation! Oh, now you're just mixing words here. No, sexually transmitted damnation! Uh, ten out of ten fornicators go to hell! Please, Jesse, let me ask you a question. Yes. If that Slara, was she a Christian? No, she was a slut. She was not a Christian. She was a whore. I'm just asking, was she a Christian before slutty or after slutty? No, she was not a Christian at all in the story so far. Then does it doesn't matter. Yes, it matters. But she's not a Christian. It doesn't matter. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this comes the judgment. But you don't understand. It doesn't matter. It matters. It ma You're a very unloving person. If you, don't, if you don't care about these slutty girls who are dying and going to hell, you're a very unloving person. Excuse me, Jesse. You're excused. She's not in the courtroom session with God, so it doesn't matter. God is going to judge your life. All right, then you're done. You're going to die. Huh? You're, you're not. Life. You're going to die. Hopefully. And you're all going to die. You're 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 all going to die. And then comes the courtroom of God. Then comes the judgment, and you give an account for all your beer guzzling, pot smoking, and whoremongering. Excuse me, excuse me. Yes. If she's not a Christian, then it doesn't matter. She's a heathen. Oh, God's going to judge the heathen. But she doesn't care. God's going to judge the wicked. She doesn't care about the Bible God. says the wicked will be cast into hell. You don't seem to understand. If I personally don't give a shit.
About hey, her. stop your filthy language. No, I talk like this all the time. I, I know, you cuss like a gangster rapper. Uh, you know, there's a... No, you don't understand. I didn't even get this from gangster rapper. Did you learn it from your mother? Huh? Where'd you get it from? The dictionary. Yeah. Yeah, no. the worst shit is in the dictionary. There's a potty in your mouth because there's a sewer no, in your heart. No, no, you don't seem to understand. The word fuck and shit are in the dictionary. I understand, but they're, they're, they're the filthy fuck? words. I got them from the dictionary. And they're, it's, the it's, it's expressing a, uh, a wretchedness of your soul. That's what those words are expressing. If I call you damnation, is it considered filthy now? If I say you're a damnation? Well, it filthy? Uh, words have meaning, yeah. If, you, if you're yeah, cursing words, someone out, you know it, words have a meaning behind them. What do you know to understand? Words are subject to change by the people. Do you listen to gangster rap music? No, I do not, sir. Do you listen to rock and roll music? No, I do not, sir. I don't listen to any music. I only listen to nature music. Do you watch cable television? Uh, no, I do not, sir. Yes. You, you say yes? Yes. yes? You don't watch cable? Uh, who are these? You watch Hollywood movies? Uh -huh. Look, I want to say, look. Well, then, it doesn't matter what you say. It matters what God says. Uh -huh. So he's the final... The judge. guy who said, shut the F up, is now telling me it doesn't matter what I say, what God says. You're going to speak for God. With that filthy, dirty mouth of yours. You're going to start speaking for God. I'm not speaking for God. No. You know there's another guy that comes here and he does the same thing you're doing, but he's covered from head to and he says that to wear t-shirts like yours are sinful because your body is supposed to be... Yeah, you're using different uh -huh. fabrics. What's, what's, what's Whatever. Yeah, you're using different... So, the Bible says... Yeah, you're going to hell for you. It's appointed it. unto yeah. man Damnation. once to die and then comes judgment. And any of you whores on this campus and any of you whore mongerers on this campus are in a collision course with wait, God. Wait, 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 wait. 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 You're revealing your body. Yeah, you're revealing your toes. Uh, are, are you, uh, are you advertising yourself, your sir? Body. You're revealing your body. Your hey, going? woman, stop checking me out. Whoa. Stop checking me out. Oh, who's the whoremonger here? You're the whoremonger. You're saying not to check her out. Whoa, what's going on? Now, uh, the Bible defines a whore or a whoremongerer as a uh, sexually promiscuous person. Yeah, your shirt. How many of you are virgins? Raise your hand. Does that matter? One over here. You are. One, one, over, one over there. Keep it up. Good job. You know, if, if you if you can go through college with your hymen intact, then that's proof that God can do miracles. That's uh, your hymen. You know what? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. You well, have you ever heard the expression "pop her cherry"? Look, what I don't have, are you listening to gangster rap? Because that's, yeah. that sounds like gangster rap oh, to me. And you, you guys said you were whoremongers, but sir, you're listening to gangster maybe you rap. guys are just whoremonger wannabes. Hey, sir, you're listening to You don't even rap. know what a hymen is. Look at that. Look at it. He's using gangster terminology on me. Look at that. Look at that. Now, He's the Bible gangster. condemns sin. Uh -huh. God hates sin. Now you're putting words God on God's judges mouth, sir. sin. He's putting words on God's mouth. And I know that there's a lot of sin on this campus. A lot of wickedness on this campus. How do you know that? You're not all oh, powerful. Oh, he asked, how do I know? You're not all powerful. That's a good that? question. Because yesterday... That's what you mean. Yesterday, I went to South Beach. That's not this campus. And at South Beach, there was a pervert parade. That is not this campus. And there were students marching in the parade with FIU Pride shirts on. Yeah, and I saw students marching with your shirt. Huh? Do you well, it said FIU Pride. Now, Pride is a code word for pervert in our society. Pride is a code word for pervert. These Pride parades are pervert parades. You know what John is a code word and for? And what they're proud of is their sexual perversion. Do you know what and FIU had a float in the parade. Shame on this campus. Uh, oh, so if you have shame, a shame, shame, shame. I thought it was legally allowed. Isn't it considered first amendment? Okay, I need to institute a new rule. I only take questions from people on the stairs or further. 
Uh, you only quit. Yeah. On the stairs or further. Uh, if you are not in one of those uh, areas, then you will be ignored. Your question will not be answered. Oh, so now you're going to be... You know, uh, God is a God of rule, hey. and uh, I need to establish rule for order uh, out here. You're not... And God. so I know with absolute certainty You're not that God. there's sinners on this campus. You're not serving God, sir. You're not serving God. I thought you said God is all part of Now you guys God. were cheering for the whores and whoremongers earlier. So are, you're not virgins. How many, how many girls have you had sex with? And, and how many STDs do you have? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Did you know that one in three college students has an STD? One in let three. Let me ask you a question. If yeah. Fetus, let me ask you a question. If you're a fetus. No. Questions are for people back there. No, 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 they're not. Look to your left. Look to your right. The one with the STD might be you in the middle. Let me ask you a question. If a man and woman married. If I'm, yeah, I can Gonor clap. I can gonorrhea. Yeah, I can clap. Syphilis. Yeah, genital know. herpes. Yeah. Crabs. HIV. Why do they exist? Why do they that exist? is God's curse on your genitals. No, it's not. Sir. The curse of God on your genitals. So you're saying Satan's not evil? God I am not evil. a virgin. <laughs> Well, my question isn't about that. No. I... One and three. One and three. One and three. You know, you college students aren't so bright. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You're not so bright. You don't know anything. You think everyone that has sex is a fornicator? I had holy sex on my holy honeymoon. Right after my holy matrimony. Did you have sex with a baby? When he was a fetus? Is he not considered yes. a virgin? Yes! I have a wedding ring on! Let me ask you, sir. Which means I have a wife! No. I can have a ring well, too. It doesn't mean anything. Well, she's at home with the babies, of course. My wife is home with the babies. Where she belongs. Oh, whoa. So you're saying you can't take care of Hey, children? don't discriminate against stay-at-home moms. You're saying you can't take care of What do you have against stay-at-home moms? That's their function in life, to, uh, to be wives, to be mothers. Uh, why do you say so? Uh, so you whoremongers have been uh, feminized by the feminists on this campus. Well, uh, have at it. Now, uh... Feminism is a problem in our society. Women, you were not made to have a job in the secular world. Wow. You were not made for that. Where does that say that in the Bible? Men, men like myself, were obviously made for hard labor, for work. That say that. By our physical constitution, that that. that's what men were made for. Women have ovaries and uh, breasts. And you know what your breasts are, women? Your breasts are not toys for frat boys. No, your, your breasts are natural baby bottles. By natural law, the mother is supposed to be home with the babies. There's no milk in my breast. So I, I am not supposed to be a stay-at-home dad. There's no, bre there's no milk in my breast. But if you girls get pregnant, you'll notice your breasts will enlarge because they're filling with milk. But that's not in the Bible. And that's so you can be a stay-at-home mother. But that's not in the Bible. That's the problem. What you just and you, uh, you girls are being brainwashed by the yeah. feminists who tell you you need to be an independent woman and go have a career. That's what you say, sir. I don't see uh, the at all. See, so well, you're here at college. Now, as of now, you you're going to get lots of college up. debt. I don't understand. You've you're going to go have your up. career. You've been making stuff up. And so you know what there, you're going to say? It's not even there. Many I of you are going to say, job. I hate my job. I love my job. And you'll say, I wish... 
I wish I had more time to be with my kids. No, you don't. That's what many working women say. I hate my job. I wish I had more time to be home with my kids. That is it in the Bible, so why Well, if you do it God's way, you'll have a happy life. You see, my wife and I, that's your can way. be an example unto you. That's we did not way. have that's sex way, until bro. marriage. That's your way. That's not God's way. And that that's means there's no STDs in my house. There's Hallelujah. Even marriage. Hallelujah. No STDs in my house. No gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes. They can happen normally. We're not not in my house. Two virgins can And my that. wife is home with her children. Having the natural fulfillment of a mother that she was designed to have. That's not in the Bible, sir. What's that? Have you ever invested in a business? Well, yeah, I've started a, a few businesses myself. Like this one? Oh, every time. Bullshit. What are you? You've, you've bought into the lie of Obama. <laughs> are you an Obama voter? Because you think capitalism is the problem, and a successful businessman must be a sinner. Look, what I don't understand. Capitalism is great. God's a capitalist. Well, there's less taxes every year. I don't understand. There's less taxes every year. How is it? The Bible says a laborer is worthy of his hire. That's capitalism. No. Uh, thou shalt not steal is one of the Ten Commandments. That's not capitalism. That either. presupposes capital, no, also known not. as private property. No, it does not. Private property. He didn't say capitalism. He just said random stuff. It's not capitalism, sir. I can't hear you. What did you say? Sitting on lessons to the sin. Uh-huh. Riding skateboards to the sin. Yeah, yeah, see? That's not even in the book. You know, I Wait, think you, you are that, yeah. you are a prime example of the intelligence of FIU. Just make stuff up and just call everything a sin. Yes, that's a great you, example. You should be the FIU mascot. Is that a Nazi salute, sir? Oh, look, a sin right there. Saluting other people. Okay, do we have any questions so far? Yeah, I have a question. You have a question? Yeah. I'll take it if you stand on the stairs. No, why can't you take it here? Because no one can hear you. You can hear me right now. No. Does anyone have any good questions? Oh, so now it's about whores. Question. What's that? What's the worst that called again? Sexually transmitted, Sexually transmitted damnation. damnation. So you're just changing words. You're just mixing up words. Yes. Now you might, you fornicators on campus, you might not have gonorrhea. You might not have syphilis. You might not have, you might not have genital herpes. But you all have sexually transmitted damnation. What about condoms, sir? What about condoms? And a, a condom will not protect you from sexually transmitted damnation. <laughs> Any sex that puts you in hell is not safe sex. Let me ask you. What's your question? Women have, uh, anal sex? Yeah. It, no, anal. How many of you girls have anal sex? Raise your hand. What about boys? Why don't you ask the boys? <laughs> Why don't you ask the boys? How many of you boys uh, have anal sex? With other boys or with girls? <laughs> uh, e either or. <laughs> I had my suspicions about you two. Are you guys a couple? Maybe. You uh, want to be a triple? Uh, anal sex causes peritonitis. Peritonitis. Do, do you know that word? What's the scientific definition of peritonitis? Well, uh. Biomajors. You know, uh, I, am not, I am not the expert on peritonitis. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of. Uh, Problems with anal sex. Uh, you see, your anus, your anus was designed for uh, defecation, not penetration. You know, penetration, to, you know, inserting foreign objects into your anus, like a, like a penis or something else. Uh, you know, your 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 anus is made out of very uh, very soft and 
sensitive and uh, thin uh, tissue. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, subjected to uh, ripping and tearing. No, uh, the vagina, on the other hand, was designed by the intelligent mind of God with very tough tissue. It was designed to handle the trauma and the pounding. It was, uh, it can handle it. And so, uh, obviously, the vagina was designed by God for the penetration of a penis, but the anus was not. The Bible calls it sodomy. It makes you a sodomite, and that means you're a sinner. sinner. Yeah. Uh, furthermore, when a, when a woman is sexually aroused, uh, when a woman is sexually aroused, her vagina lubricates, does it not? Well, you know, you might not be very attracted to them, uh, or they might not be attracted to you. Maybe you don't excite these women, but, uh, but that's the way God designed uh, women. When they are sexually aroused, their vagina lubricates. And now it's prepared for the penetration, you know, of a, of a stiff, erect uh, penis. But, uh, but the anus, boys and girls, does not lubricate. It doesn't. That's why these homos, these homos need to use uh, their own spit or lubrication to uh, engage in anal sex. And so it's a perversion of nature, the Bible says. Any of you sodomites are perverting the nature that God gave you. My name is Saint Jesse. Oh yes. What does blasphemy mean? That is not right. Everything you say. Everything you say. Now I am a saint. I used to be a sinner. Uh, yeah, I, I am hot. I admit it. Now, uh, now I used to be a sinner. I used to be a drug dealer, street fighter, gangster rapper. Yes. In uh, in the rough streets of Connecticut. Oh yeah. I, uh, I was convicted of my first felony when I was 15. So you're a sinner. And I even got my neck slit in a knife fight when I was 15. Yeah, you can see it. Well, you can come see it. Yeah. And, uh, but Jesus did a work in my life. And I'm here to testify of what Christ can do for you. No, I don't rap anymore. I got sanctified. No, you know, if I start rapping, you girls, you girls might start backing it up. And, uh, you know, you college girls, I start rapping and you start twerking. And so, and, uh, you know, you can't twerk it for Jesus. You can't, no, you cannot. Okay, back to the uh, back to the homo issue. Uh, I was preaching yesterday at the pervert parade in South Beach, and I there were as I was preaching. Wait, what, did you say did I get punched in the face? Well, why would I be worried about that? These are tolerant and accepting people. Why would these, why would I have to worry about getting punched in the face? They're so loving and tolerant and accepting. No, we nearly had a riot at one point. But, uh, but there, as I was preaching, there were two girls that started kissing. No. On the lips. And it was not a smooch or a 
Brett Pack, it was a French kiss. Yeah, she was putting her tongue in that woman's mouth. You know, with, with a little bit of work, I can make a preacher out of you boys. And, uh, but you know, you know what I observed about these girls? One of them had long hair. So she's obviously the feminine one in the relationship. And the other girl had a butch haircut. Yeah. So she's obviously the masculine figure in the relationship. And so I said, hey, so I, I tried to engage uh, her in conversation. I said, hey, lesbian, uh, if, uh, if you are attracted to women, then why, why does your girlfriend look like a boy? And she could not answer me. She could not explain that. Now, the truth is, they were abused by a man. So they have male phobia. They're male phobic. And, uh, but, you know, uh, deep down they are attracted to masculinity, which is why many lesbians act and look like boys. Furthermore, you know what else I said to these lesbians? I said to the crowd, I guarantee that these lesbians masturbate with dildos. Oh, <laughs> Does anyone know what a dildo is? It's sort of a vulgar term. <laughs> sure, what's that? Uh, <clears throat> I'm just having uh, issues because, you see, I have, uh, I have emotional problems right now. Because I'm going through, uh, through difficulties with my wife okay? and my daughter. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's kind of emotional. And uh, I kind of like came here because it's a quiet place. Yeah. And I have respect for the word of God, trust me. All right? But right now, I just, these guys are kind of annoying me. And the only way to stop it is, I think, if you stop. Um, well, no, maybe the preaching would help. If this is emotional for you, you should find another place. Yeah, but this is place that I like. Yeah. But listen, uh, my, my wife also has short hair, uh -huh. and I think that it's kind of insulting for, for you to say that about Well, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. A woman should have long hair. It's her glory. Well, but uh, so, if this is too emotional think, for you, no, my recommendation is you find somewhere else. Loving, okay, back to the dildos. Um, well, that was private. Now... Uh, a dildo is a fake male organ. It's a, you know, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a phallus. And uh, for a lesbian to masturbate with a dildo is proof that she was designed by God to have sex with a man. It's proof that her vagina was designed by God to be penetrated by a penis. Yeah, I believe it. Excuse me, sir. Uh, there's no, I, I don't know if I can do anything else for you. But listen, um, yeah. I'm sorry to bother you being dis um, maybe disrespectful right now. I hope I'm not. But I really need, you know, I really need a quiet place. And I chose this place. You, you need to choose somewhere else. Sir. But if this is the only place I can preach. Why? No, it's not. You no, it's a free, a lot of other no, this is the only free speech area on campus. That's not true. This is, is the only free speech area on campus. Is it? Yes, it is. There's also okay. Furthermore, when you have two homosexuals, homo, a homosexual, uh, when they have an, when they have an. When they have an orgasm, do you know what, what substance they ejaculate? Penis. No. They eject penises out of the No. When a, when a homosexual... When a homosexual has an orgasm, they ejaculate uh, sperm and semen. No way. Yes. 
and the Demons. the uh, the natural purpose of uh, sperm is to impregnate a female egg. So the fact the fact that homosexuals ejaculate sperm is proof that they were designed by God to have sex with women. And it's obvious that these homosexuals are attracted to feminine figures because they act like girly men, like sissy types. And so uh, sin, at its essence, is a perversion of nature, a violation of the nature that God has given you. Okay, allow me to illustrate the fallacy of your thinking. A, uh, he, his argument is how can it be a violation of nature when animals do it? When animals have homosex. Homosex. Well, you know, the praying, the praying mantis will bite the head off of the male to uh, make him ejaculate during sex. So do spiders. But if you women were to bite the head off of a man during sex, that would be unnatural for you to do. And it's not possible. What's natural for an animal is not necessarily natural for a human being. What about overpopulation? Ooh. What if, maybe the lesbians are helping us out a little bit. Overpopulation is a myth. What do you mean it's a myth? It's a myth. China? Have you seen China lately? You know, I'm from Texas. We have lots of open land. Yeah, I know. Now, uh, they say that everyone you know, we're not, we're not supposed to base our sexuality on the animal kingdom. Now, I grant to you that homosexuals live like animals. You're right. Homosexuals live like animals. They are animals. They're living by their impulse, by their animals. feelings. And Everybody. they're supposed to be governed by conscience. conscience. Yes, by conscience. Saint Daniel. Saint Daniel. Saint Daniel. <laughs> but many of you are living the same way. Whatever feels good, do it. Damnation. Hey. If it feels good to smoke the wacky tobacco. Hey, that, that was pretty good. Have you smoked the wacky tobacco? If it feels good to uh, guzzle a 40 or to do a keg stand, do it. Hey, if it feels good to have premarital sex, do it. But we can do it, though. If it feels good to sodomize your fraternity, brother, Whoa. Do it. Whoa, that's, that's too far. That's too far. You're taking it to another level. And you live by this, what the Bible calls the carnal mind. This mentality, this mindset, this purpose of, of mind, of, of whatever feels good. Get drunk, get high, get laid. Yes. Woo. Yeah. You know, that should be the FIU motto. Exactly. Get drunk, get high, get laid. So we can put it on the school. So we can tweet it. Well, you guys should be able to figure it out. Hashtag it. We're too stupid. Let's hashtag it. Get drunk, get high, get laid, everybody. And then there's a modern acronym. Everyone who's videotaping this. GDGL. Let's all hashtag that. Start a trend. GDGL. Hashtag GDGL. No, get drunk, get high, get laid. Okay, GDGHGL. Yeah. Everybody. You know, what's with, what's with the modern, you know, fab, uh, fashion of uh, acronyms, like uh, YOLO, you know, that's another modern acronym. Well, you you only one. live once. No, that's not what it is. Lord. Uh, Lord once. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this comes the judgment. In other words, YOLO. Many. You only I live once. Okay, so the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity with God. Those of you that have that mindset, get drunk, get high, get laid, are enemies of God. Because you're living like the devil. 
You know, that's how the devil lives. The devil lives like that. He lives selfish, self-centered, for his own pleasure, for his own satisfaction. And many of you live like the devil. You're selfish, selfish, selfish. St. Louis wears Jesus sandals. And it makes you an enemy of God. He knows the truth. God is not that way. God is a benevolent God, a loving God. Is he a forgiving God? He cares about others. Is he forgiving? God is a forgiving God. So he forgives G L G H G D. So we are all okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh boy. I will be here oh boy. For another 30 seconds, and then I must go to class. It appears that I need to educate you, college students, once again. Once again. God's forgiveness. Forgiveness is conditional. Conditional! Yes. God does not forgive everybody. Why not? <laughs> that, would, that would be dumb. That would be dumb, he says. That would be dumb. That would be dumb. I did not read of the word dumb in the Bible. Yes, it's in there. Where? The, the deaf, dumb, and blind? No, but that's a different the sense. The dumb can't speak? Different sense of the word, so it does not count. <laughs> and uh, imagine if Barack Obama... Barack Obama! As the uh, chief executive of our government, president of our government, you know, uh, issued a pardon, pardon to every criminal in prison. Every single one of them. Saint Daniel, how do you feel about? Andy? Imagine if Barack Obama gave a pardon to all of the gang bangers in jail. But why would he do that? Why not? Because they broke the laws. That were chosen no, of the United States government. <laughs> Everybody, listen to me now. I will tell you. This man wears Jesus sandals, wears black shirts in the sun. <laughs> this sun is very bright. And we must all beware, because the sun gives us dangerous UV rays. <laughs> Sunburned by the sun, and I must know that I must wear sunscreen. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you. I think that man likes attention. I think that man wants attention. He must be a he must be a theater major. Where were we? Oh yes, Barack Obama. So if Barack Obama gave a pardon to every gangbanger in prison, every murderer, every rapist, that would not be safe to the community. It would be unwise, be unjust, it'd be unloving. Well, how much more then if God gave an unconditional pardon to every sinner in the universe? Well, he is a man of authority. He's a man who's the chief executive of a government. He's in a position of ruler. And uh, if God let you fornicators into heaven, that would ruin the place. If God let you liars and thieves into heaven, that would ruin it. It wouldn't be heaven anymore. If God let rapists and murderers and self-centered, selfish people into heaven, it would no longer be heaven anymore. It'd be no better than Miami. Yeah. yeah what? Are you agreeing with me or are you cheering for Miami? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so God says, unless you repent, you will perish. Now, perish means uh, damnation, destruction, perdition. What's that? Well, actually, I'm, I have my doubts. You guys, uh, the fact is you haven't graduated yet. So uh, you don't really have a college education just yet. You're working on it. Uh, furthermore, I've had college students cuss me out today. And that's not an in but that's not an intelligent vocabulary. I mean, you could be a ghetto hood and talk like that. They cuss like gangster rappers. So it is. And uh, so God says, 
Repent or perish. If you're a drunkard getting drunk on your jello shots, your beer funnels, your keg stands, you need to put down your bottle and pick up the Bible. If you're a pot smoker getting high on marijuana, you need to put down the bong and pick up the Bible. That's what it means to repent, to have a change of mind. When you're carnally minded, you're an enemy of God. When you're reconciled to God, you change your mind. You repent of your carnal mind. Many of you are not spiritually minded. You're carnally minded. You'd rather have an orgasm than a Bible study. You know more gangster rap lyrics than you know holy scriptures. You'd rather go to a Lady Gaga concert than to go to a church service. You know, you're, you're, you're carnally minded, earthly minded, sensually minded. You're not spiritually minded. Many of you care more about who wins or loses the Super Bowl than whether you go to heaven or hell when you die. What, what's that? Yeah, the Super Bowl is the stupid bowl. You know, people get so stupid, they're fanatics, they're radicals. They're extremists. They paint their face and take off their shirts. These sport nuts, sport idolaters. I get excited about the living God. They get excited about a pigskin. How about FIFA? What's that? Football. Legitimate football. Oh, like you mean soccer. Yeah, football. I see. Ah. Now, I... I I have not always been the saint that you see today. I used to sin every single day. I used to get high every day. Oh my God! It's true. Yeah. And so then in the ninth grade, I realized I was a hell deserving sinner. And I was in trouble with God. Well, I started to read the Bible. I read about Jesus Christ dying for me shedding his blood for me and that through him I could be changed I could be born again and I cried out to God and I said God save my soul and change my life and that's what God did I stopped listening to gangster rap I stopped smoking pot stopped getting drunk I was a new man the Bible says he whosoever is born of God does not commit sin he that sinneth is of the devil. So I was born again. So I'm out here to testify to this campus. Jesus Christ is alive. And you drunkards are in trouble with God. You pot smokers are in trouble with God. You whores and whoremongers are in trouble with God. But you can be born again. You can be saved. You can be changed. You can be transformed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Do we have any questions so far about gangster rap, whores, whoremongers, pot smoking, homosex? Any questions so far? If God can't accept it, I like pussy, then he doesn't love people. Were you at that pervert parade yesterday? I was. I knew it. So any of you homosexuals, on this campus, you need to stop it. You need to stop it now. You need to stop it before God curses you with HIV. Stop it before you die of AIDS and go to hell. I'll, I'll enjoy hell. I'm gay. You homos. <laughs> You homos need to repent before you get it in the end. Now the hate is... I went to the pervert parade yesterday and all the hate came from the homos. They hated me being there. They were booing for me. Hello. Now this lady has a question. I want to, I'm preaching to everybody. What are you preaching? I'm preaching the Bible today. Yes. What are you preaching in front of the Bible? Well, I'm preaching about sin, repentance, hell, judgment. What about 
Jesus, right. atonement. Yeah, now Jesus loves the homos. In fact, I have a friend who is homo no mo. Yes, he is homo no mo because of Jesus Christ. And so I have, I have good news. I have hope for homos. You can be homo no mo through repentance and faith in Christ. You would rather be gay than to have a relationship with God, to have your sins forgiven, to escape the damnation of hell? I would rather be gay. Yes. Well, by gay, do you mean happy or you mean pervert? Well, I mean falling in love with a man, getting married, and you know, raising children. Raising children, you know. You, you can't have a child uh, naturally because, uh, you know, men cannot get pregnant. And uh, it doesn't matter how much he ejaculates into your anus, a baby will never come out. And then you, then you try and adopt a child to brainwash them with your perversion. I wouldn't trust you homosexuals with a, with a pet, let alone a, a, a child. You don't even know what your penis is for. No, you have no idea what your penis is for. The reason you homos ejaculate semen and sperm is so you can impregnate a woman. The reason you lesbians have breasts so you can breastfeed. You have ovaries so you can get pregnant. But like, why are you mad though? That's a real question. I'm mad at the devil. Many of you have the devil inside of you. I'm mad. I'm mad that you're living in rebellion against God. I don't want you guys to die of AIDS and go to hell. Well, you're increasing your chances. 61% of all new infections of HIV are homosexual. Where are these statistics coming from? The government. The government? What branch of the government? All you got to do is uh, go to the National Health... Uh, care or National Health Department. Uh, they stopped. They stopped the homo statistics of HIV in 2009. Apparently, it didn't make them look good. So you know it's worse even now. But you know there's other. You know God curses you with HIV if you are a sexual pervert. God sees how immoral you are, and He says, "Curse you, genitals." curse you and he strikes your genitals with you know uh, syphilis or uh, genital herpes maybe you get gonorrhea or HIV it's God's curse on your sexual immorality now you don't have to be a homosexual to get HIV just everyday normal whores and whoremongers get HIV as well Well, that's another reason why you should not be homo, because uh, that can affect uh, your offspring. I suppose, uh, I suppose a homo who gets pregnant obviously must be a bisexual. Hey, don't judge my uh, hatred. Don't judge my sexuality. Don't hate my hatred. You know, why can't you guys accept me as I am? God made me this way. That's a Lady Gaga lyric. I, I was born again this way. So why can't you accept me as I am? And I'm not a homophobe. I'm not afraid of these sissy boys. I am... A, yeah, why would I be afraid of these girly men? I am not homophobic. I am afraid for them. I am afraid you might die of AIDS and go to hell unless you repent and become homo no mo. How many homosexuals do we have in the crowd? Raise your hand. All right, everyone, mark the... Watch out for these people. Watch out for them. They might try to recruit you. 
Because they cannot reproduce, they have to recruit. Because uh, you're not born that way, they try to corrupt you. Don't let this guy buy you drinks to dumb down your mind. So I'm out here to set this campus straight. God wants to put you on the straight and narrow. Emphasis on the straight. The straight and narrow. Now I have a friend. He is an ex-homosexual. Well, uh, homosexuality is a lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, homosexuality is a lifestyle. It's actually a death style. Homosexuality is to die for. The average homosexual dies at the age of 42. That is bull. Because, because the average homosexual has 300 partners. The government health care department. <laughs> United States government. What year was the study conducted? You know, uh, well, they stopped a lot of these statistics in 09. No, what's stupid is putting a penis in your anus. That's stupid. If they love each other, it's love. No, it's not love to penetrate a man's rectum. With a foreign object. That's not love, that's lust. You, know you don't know what love is, woman. You know? you, you I want to know what love is. Have you been penetrated? Has your boyfriend deceived you into thinking anal sex is loving? It's abuse. Homosexuals all abuse each other. It's abuse. Mutual abuse. They consent to abuse. It's wicked, wicked, wicked. You see, a woman's vagina lubricates when she's aroused. How do you know? I am a married man. I'm making babies. I'm trying. You, you whorish women keep aborting your babies. Us Christians will keep having children, and we're going to take over. How uh, many kids do you have? I have a, a five-year-old. A uh, three-year-old and a baby born next month. I hope they come out. I hope, I hope they come out a lot better than you do. They're not going to be born gay. Do you love them? Of course, I love them. So what if one of them is gay? You still going to love them? Well, you, by gay, do you mean happy? A homosexual. I mean a homosexual. A homosexual. Oh well, you know, let's suppose, let's suppose my child grows up to be a homosexual. Uh, it would be like. Say my child grew up to be a crackhead. Uh, your, na your, your neighborhood homo is like your neighborhood crackhead. Uh, they're making very bad choices. And if you love your child, you would encourage them to make better choices. Not, so not destructive choices. So I would treat my child the same way I would uh, if they had a drug habit. I would care enough to tell them to stop it. You know, it's not love. It's, it's, it's okay to love a man. That's fine. I love my father. I love my brother. I love my son. There's nothing wrong with a man loving a man. The problem is men having sex with men. You weren't designed to do that. That's why your anus does not lubricate like the vagina does. That's why you homos... That's why you homos ejaculate... Uh, semen and sperm because you were designed to impregnate a woman you were designed by God to impregnate a woman you're perverting yourself because you're selfish you're wicked you're evil you need to repent well, the guy who doesn't know what his penis is for calls me ignorant You guys don't even know basics of human sexuality, and you think I'm ignorant. Well, this is the free speech area. This is as best of the shade I can provide. And uh, 
you know, it, homosexuality is a big problem on this campus. Because yesterday, I went to the pervert parade at South Beach, and I saw that FIU had a float in the parade. And there were students in the parade that had shirts on that said FIU Pride. And pride is a code word for pervert. That's what, it, that's what FIU Pride means. FIU Pride means FIU Pervert. What's that? Well, uh, they're proud of their perversion. What's next? Uh, uh, child molester parades? Bestiality parades? Adultery parades? Open marriage parades? You're not ashamed of your, your sin, you're proud. Everyone be quiet, the woman has a question. Well, as, as the loving, benevolent person that I am, I want them to have the relationships that God designed them for. You see, you women were designed by God to be wives. You were designed by God to marry a man and to make babies for your husband. Yes, and in your, for, in your role as mothers and in your role as wives, you find true satisfaction and happiness as God intended for you. And being the benevolent, loving person that I am, I want lesbians to have the best relationship they have, which is why I want to go straight. And uh, marry a man. What if they're happy with their, with their girlfriend? No, they're not happy. That's why so many of them commit suicide. Because, no, this society accepts them now. They're not happy. That's why they call themselves gay, to fool the ignorant-minded. How many of you smoke marijuana? Ah. Good business around here. Ah. Now it all makes sense. Now I know why you think it's okay to be gay. You guys are dazed and confused. You're not thinking right because you smoke marijuana. No wonder you think it's okay to be gay. Well, well, yeah, I'm, I, I, I praise God. A preacher told me I was on my way to hell. What's wrong with sports? <laughs> well, many of you, many of you know more sports statistics than you know holy scriptures. That's called sport idolatry. Many of you know more uh, sport athletes than you know apostles. I know St. Jesse. Now, uh, now many of you said you smoke marijuana. Oh, thank you. Hard about this. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Hey, God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about the wacky tobacco, and then we'll talk about uh, this idolatry. Now, does, d does anyone know what the greatest commandment is? Sir, sir, sir. The people feel like you're bashing them instead of saying, oh, God loves you, but he doesn't love what you do. They feel like you're bashing them, judging them. Oh, you guys need to toughen up, you sissies. See, that's the point. You need to toughen up. A guy comes to campus and preaches the Bible, and you feel you're getting bashed. You need to get some tougher skin. Okay. You know, and you know, this might be too aggressive for some of you women. It might be better for you to leave. This might be too aggressive for some of you women. Too emotional. You know how you women can be. Why do you need to take birth control? Uh, the, 
The biblical word is whore. The biblical word is whore. It's porne from the Greek. It means a promiscuous woman. She's cheaper than a prostitute. You, you girls put the prostitutes out of business. They can't even run. Yeah. No, you know what your hymen is worth? You know how much your hymen should cost? Marriage. A lifelong commitment. That's how much your hymen should cost. And you give it away very cheap. Very cheap. I'm a married man. Uh, I, I, uh, I had... Oh, I, what was? I, I had uh, waited until marriage. My wife waited until marriage. Nice fuck, so I bought you some contraception. Don't forget the loo. Don't forget the loo. That man was a homosexual. He had a rainbow uh, wristband from the pervert parade yesterday. And, uh, and he talked like a homosexual. All right, so does anyone know what the greatest commandment of all is? Wait, 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 wait. What does a homosexual talk like? Well, they, they have a, a lisp. You're so. When I'm talking, I say rebellious women are fine. What about loudmouth women? Gay people are just fine. I say no hate. You are so hateful. <laughs> yes, yeah, stop. I say you need to get off campus. You're so intolerant. You're so hateful. You're a bigot against my bigotry. No, I'm not. You're a bigot against my bigotry. A bigot means an intolerant person, and you're not tolerant of my intolerance, so you're a bigot towards my bigotry. Well, you're a bigot too, then. That makes you a hypocrite. That makes you a hypocrite. Yeah, loudmouth women should leave. The Bible says women ought to learn in silence, and you're the reason. You're the reason women can't be pastors. You're so emotional, you women. Why are you such an asshole. You're, uh, hey! you're such an asshole. There's a reason why all the educated people agree with me and not with you. What ed? What? You mean the pot smokers? The pot smokers. The 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 educated the, these pot smokers. The people think it's okay to put a penis in your anus. And for your information, I am not a sphincter muscle. Oh, are, are you not are you not educated enough to know what that is? You know what? I'm educated enough to know that you're an idiot, and I'm gonna leave. Thank you. What you're saying is contaminating my mind. Thank you. Man, take your hatred with you, woman. Take. I'm feeling all these hate vibes coming off you. Man, this place just got a whole lot more uh, loving now that she's gone. I feel it. Man. Glad that hate got off this uh, area. See, I'm all about love. You guys are about hate. I'm saying you ought to love God, love your neighbor, and stop sinning. You guys want to keep sinning, and that's hateful. If you really loved, you wouldn't sin. Love is the fulfillment of the law. So you don't sin? Why well, choose not to? You probably do. Hey, hey. If I wanted to, I mean, I could go out tonight, get drunk, get high, get laid. Hey! 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 But, uh, but I choose not to, because I'm not a selfish, hateful person. I've been changed and transformed by Jesus Christ, and by loving Him, and faith in Him, and fear in Him, I choose not to sin. You're a, you're a mistaken woman. As usual, you women are mistaken. 
She said Jesus did not teach fear. It was Jesus who said, don't fear man who can destroy the body and man can do nothing more, but fear God who can destroy body and soul in hell. Jesus said, yes, I tell you, fear him. So you made up your own Jesus, your pocket-sized Jesus. That explains it. Now, the Jesus of the Bible says, fear God, because he'll send you to hell. That's why you ought to fear him. Fear God, because he can send you straight to hell. And where are you going, heaven? Because if you're going to heaven, I don't want to be anywhere near you. I just... If you guys... More judgment, judge. Accept me as I am, as hateful as I am. Accept me as hateful as I am. God made me this way. I was born again this way. And if you think I'm hateful, if you think I'm hateful, wait till you meet God. God is more judgmental. God is more hateful. God is more intolerant than I am. She wants to know my name. My name is Saint Jesse. And if you don't feel, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, calling me Saint Jesse, uh, you can call me Brother Jesse. Yeah, I don't. Brother Jesse, could I just say uh, I appreciate you uh, preaching, but I think you're going about it the wrong way. But I mean, I think everyone needs to be saved. I think. Yeah. I think this is a great thing you're doing, but I think you're going about it a little bit too rough. People. Well, we can't agree on everything. Thank yes. you. I appreciate it. Okay, moving on. Uh, you see, hate is not always bad. In fact, FIU, the problem with this campus, we don't have enough hatred on this campus. We need more hatred. The Bible says, you who love the Lord, hate that which is evil. The Bible says Jesus Christ loved righteousness and hated iniquity. He hated iniquity. It says Hebrews 1 9. Have you never read the Bible? Yeah, Hebrews. Was it a man or was it God? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Don't look at your notes. Talking about Jesus Christ says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. That means he hates sin. Psalms 5.5 5 says God hates all workers of iniquity. What about the parts where he hates people eating shellfish? Where is that, where's that in the Bible? Bible. Where does it say he hates it? He doesn't like people eating shellfish. Well, he, there's things he told them not to do and try to develop an understanding in their mind between clean and unclean. After all, they just came from Egypt, which was so corrupt and perverse. We tried to teach them clean and unclean. These concepts and ideas that were new to them. The other problem on this campus is that there's too much love. You guys love your sex. You love your porno. You love your you love your marijuana. You love your drunkenness. You love your immodest women. You love wearing your bikini at the beach. What else am I supposed to wear? Clothing, not underwear. Yes. 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 You know, I swim with a shirt on because I don't want to cause you women to lust. I swim with a shirt on. You sure you're just not self-conscious, buddy? And you know. Uh, now, uh, love is not always right. Hate is not always bad. It depends on the object that you're loving or the object that you're hating. If you hate sin, that's a good hatred. If you love sin, that's a bad love. If you love uh, righteousness, that's a good love. But if you hate righteousness, then that is a, uh, a bad, uh, a bad uh, hatred. Yeah, a, a, a woman left that purse earlier uh, on the bench. Yeah. 
So the Bible. No, leave that one alone. No, you exception, guys. I know, right? Ignore us. We're done. I'm sure he'll get her permission when it's returned. Okay. So we need more hatred on this campus and less love. Hate sin. Love righteousness. Don't love sin. Hate sin. Don't hate righteousness. Love righteousness. I can't let it go. No, man, that phrase went out of too much. Like the only reason you hate righteousness is because you're selfish. Yeah? And the only reason you love sin is because you're selfish. Yeah. And that's why you need to, what the Bible calls, repent. It means to change your mind, to change your heart. Where you uh, reconsider your life. See how your life of sin tends to misery, death, and hell. And see how God's ways are right. What are we supposed to do about everyone else? Well, you know, if you become a loving person, maybe I'll see you out here preaching next time. No, what do we do? Literally, everyone else is not following your little, little box, your little Christian box. What do we do with everyone else? Oh, well, I'm not like a Muslim who says, kill the infidel. I, uh, I'm, I believe we ought to go to convert the heathen, to preach the word. That's why I'm here, to convert you heathen on this campus. Well, you preach and preach and preach, and uh, they either, uh, I, say, I say preach until they either kill you or they convert. And don't stop until one of those two things happens. So if they don't convert, they're going to hell, right? For like a fucking eternity? Well, without the explicit, uh, for eternity, yes. That explicit's not in the Bible. Actually, uh, a, a effing eternity is what the Mormons believe in. Eternal celestial sex, where they repopulate their own planets. Okay, That's okay. not Christian. I have this problem. I don't care if I get like, eternal salvation. Faith, but if I have to hang around with a bunch of bigots who condemn like, everyone else I know to like, hell for eternity, then I'd rather not hang out. You condemn yourself. Okay. You condemn yourself. You guys are worse than murderers. Okay. Wow. Because you actually believe what you're saying. Wow. Where do you think the wicked should go? Do you think all these people deserve to burn in hell for The only people that go to hell are those who deserve it. Oh. And the only reason, the only reason you don't think you deserve to go to hell is because you're self-righteous and that itself is a sin. If hell is not filled with people like you, then I welcome it with open arms. I, I have a few questions for you. Well, uh, well, what is, what's your first name? <laughs> well, what is your name, your first name? My name is Andy. Okay, everybody, this is Andy. Everyone say hi, Andy. Andy's coming. Andy, are you a sinner? Yes. What sins do you have in your life? Uh, have you had premarital sex? Yes. Well, you, well, you, you just damaged that girl. She's damaged goods. Right. You damaged her. You hurt her. I mean, no, uh, no self-respecting man is gonna marry some girl you just turned into a whore. Well, unless she becomes a pre uh, unless she becomes a born again virgin. Oh, so you can regrow your virginity. Well, you can have a pure heart again, be a born again virgin. But you damage that girl. You hurt that girl. Uh, are you a sinner? Hold on, I have some more questions. How how many girls have you had sex with? Four. Four. So this was not a loving, lifelong, committed relationship. You were using and abusing these girls. Excuse me? Are you married to your brother? Do you love your family? Sure. But I'm not using and abusing them for an orgasm. I'm not abusing them. Yes, you are. You're using and abusing these girls for the pleasure of your genitals. I probably made them more happy with Girls, 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 
Mark this man and take him off your list of potential suitors. Because he's he's whoremongering around campus. When's the intermission? I have some more questions for you. Do you get drunk? No, actually I haven't though. Never in your life? Never in my life. I, I can fix that for you. Do you get drunk with religious fervor? <laughs> and you've never smoked marijuana? Yes. You have, or you have yes. you know. Well, I, I thought you said you've done like all the sins. You, you've never gotten drunk. You said you've done like all the sins, but you've never gotten drunk. And, and that means you know buzzed, tipsy. I'm sorry, I'm taking drunk off the list. Put an X there. Okay. So so far you're a whoremonger and a pot smoker. Have you ever told a lie? And you're a liar. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why do you choose not to answer the question if you're a sinner? You no, I'm not a sinner. There you go. Are we not drawing? Now, uh, so far, you deserve hell at least three times. Okay. You deserve three hells. In fact, it's probably more than that because you've committed whoremongering more than once. I'm sure you've lied more than once and gone high more than once. You deserve hell for every sin you've ever committed. Oh, shit. Good question, my friend. So you've never committed a sin? So you know what that means? You've never committed a sin. That means you need Jesus Christ. Excuse that me. means you need a Savior. That means you need the forgiveness of God. You need the mercy of God. If God gave you what you deserve, you would burn forever. Yo, have you ever committed sin? I used to sin every day. So then you deserve hell for every sin. I deserve to go to hell. So you're not going to heaven. But I'm not going to get what I deserve. God gave me what I don't deserve, eternal life, forgiveness. If you say that what you deserve is hell, if he was truly your just God, then you would go His to justice to is sin. His go justice is maintained Why by the blood sin? of Jesus Christ. Jesus died for my sin. And because Jesus died for my sin, God can be merciful without being unjust. His law is not being mistreated by my forgiveness because of the atonement that's been made. And the atonement shows God hatred for sin just as much as my damnation would have. So it's just as much of a preventative as my punishment would have been. So God is merciful and just through the atonement of Jesus Christ. And that's the only reason I'm not going to go to hell because I turn from my sin and put my faith in Christ and if you turn from your sin, put your faith in Christ, you can have everlasting life. That's true. If you're God, God. Why would God create creation in order to hate it? Well, God, God does not hate what he made. He hates how we have perverted what he made. Has he not created everything? If God created everything, didn't he create free will? God created free will, but you choose how to use it. He created the option as well. Well, uh... You know, you can't have the option of virtue without the option of vice. He created vice as well. He created virtue. No, no, no. Vice is, a, vice is a personal free will choice. God cannot create uh, a character uh, for you. You create your own character. It must be voluntary and self-chosen. You made yourself a sinner. Don't blame God. But God created sinners in the first place. No, God created Adam and Eve. They were innocent, and then by choice, they chose to sin, and by choice, you chose to sin, and that's why you deserve hell, and why you need a savior, because you chose to be a sinner, and you haven't stopped. Yes. The Bible says, go and sin no more. He that sins is of the devil. Whosoever has been born of God does not commit sin. I put down the bong. I put down the bottle. I picked up the Bible. Yeah, it does. It means, uh, yeah, it does. I stopped committing the sins that I was committing. What curse did I say? Damn? Well, God will damn your sin. That's a biblical word. I'm not cursing an individual. I'm saying God is going to curse you on Judgment Day. He's going to curse you with damnation. 
for eternity. Because you deserve it. What's that? You're upset because you said you're involved in premarital sex. That's why you're upset. Because the Bible calls those of you women that have premarital sex whores. And that's why you're upset. She has a question. Was I raised in a born again Christian home or did I choose to become born a, uh, again? I was not raised in a Christian home. Uh, not at all. Uh, I came to Christ because I heard a hell fire preacher when I was locked up in a jail cell. I was fifth. I was 15 years old. And when I was 15 years old, I was a street fighter, a, a gangster rapper, a drug dealer. I got my neck slit in a knife fight. I was addicted to almost every drug known to man. I was already a convicted felon. And I heard that because of my sin, I deserve to go to hell. And I knew it to be true. These are some very good questions. So after I heard a hellfire preacher, and I realized that I was a hell-deserving sinner, I read the Bible. And the Bible says that Christ died for our sin, that Jesus shed his blood for us, and he rose from the dead. And that if we will repent and believe, God will forgive us and grant us everlasting life. So I changed my mind about sinning. I repented. And I cried out to God. I said, God, save my soul and change my life. And that's what God did. He saved my soul. He changed my life. I stopped selling drugs. I stopped doing drugs. I stopped listening to gangster rap. I became a new person. Yes. Uh, he was nice like I am. He he raised his voice. He was loving like I am. Uh, she has a question. If you want to be born again, what do you do? It's quite simple, really. If you want eternal life, the forgiveness of sin, it's quite simple. You change your mind about sinning. It's called repentance. Realize how hell-deserving you are because of your sin and how sin is so harmful and so hateful that you never want to sin again. You make up your mind to sin no more. And you ask God to forgive you of all the sins you've committed through the blood of Jesus Christ. See, through the atonement of Christ, God offers us mercy. That God will set aside your damnation because an atonement has taken its place. And so if you want forgiveness, you want eternal life, you need to repent and believe. And how does that make you a better person? Well, you go from being a sinner to being a saint. A saint isn't a better person. How does that yes, make you, a you go from serving the devil to serving God. How does giving up a bond, giving up sex, how does that make you a better person? You go from being a self-centered person to a Christ-centered person. You're self-centered if you're doing this for your own fucking self. You do it for His glory and for the well-being of your neighbor and the salvation of your soul. Even a benevolent being has a regard for their own self-interest. You just don't regard yourself supremely. That's selfishness. The only people you care about are apparently God and yourself then. No, no, no. I, don't, I stopped sinning because I don't want to hurt my neighbor anymore. And I don't want to dis uh, dishonor God anymore. You and I don't want to hurt myself. You want to condemn them to hell. I don't, I'm trying to save you from hell. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's not like these Miami girls. 
She's not like these Miami girls or these college girls that slept around. She was a virgin when I uh, met her. She was a virgin when I married her. Now this might be unfathomable for many of you because you know you've never maybe you've never met a virgin on this campus so you can't imagine that some girls actually wait until marriage but it's true they do because I was the one who had sex with her for the first time no I do know well I've had some confessions to whorish behavior on this campus well, she already took her birth control pill. Like a Are you a virgin? That answers my question. That answers my question. Not her. Not her. She said. She's a promiscuous woman. And I said, you're watching promiscuous, I'm still not entirely sure. What's wrong with being promiscuous? I don't get it. I'm seven of the law. What's wrong with being promiscuous? You're using and abusing each other. That's not the relationship God designed us to have. So to have a loving relationship. Fuck yeah. Woo. That's my jam right there. You know why they call it rock and roll? Because when girls listen to rock and roll, that car starts rocking and rolling because of what they do in the back seat. Yeah, get drunk, get high, get laid. That's the mindset, mentality of most college students. It's called being carnally minded. And that's the reason, that's the reason that one in three college students has an STD. Yeah, one in three. Hey, JK, could you preach while I get some water? I'm dying. It's here. All right, we're out here again at FIU, Florida International University. This is day two, uh, and I told the students we were coming back yesterday, and I uh, told them to uh, read their Bibles uh, last night and uh, you know so they can come out and prove me wrong so uh, we'll see if anyone brings out their Bibles I told them to bring if they didn't like our sign I told them to make their own signs and we'll see if they come out with any signs and I told them to invite their friends and uh, we had a good uh, meeting yesterday uh, 12 to 4 and expect to have a good meeting again today uh, yesterday we filled up the whole staircase here and uh, they were sitting and listening and uh, asking questions and uh, I expect uh, it'll be uh, uh, an even better day today so uh, uh, let's uh, let's get started so I'm out here again today with the Bible preach the Word of God on this campus because I know this is a campus that's full of sin 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 what's that yeah uh, well, it's not just some sin, it's a lot of sin. Lots, Lots of sin. Lots. As I uh, noticed on Sunday, there's a lot of students marching in the pervert parade at South Beach. What was that? I well, it's perverted, it's wicked, it's wrong. What's the, name of that? the pervert parade? No, I'm pretty sure that's an actual name. Oh, the, the pride parade is what, well, you know, but pride is, a, pride is a code word for pervert. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I humbly confess that uh, Christ has uh, changed my life. You see, it requires humility to admit uh, I was a sinner. And, uh, but yeah, uh, pride, uh, you know, they're proud of their wickedness, proud of their sin. I'm here to shame them, to uh, uh, humble them, humiliate them. Yeah, that's what God would do. You know, God's the one who gave you your conscience. So that in your conscience, uh, you would feel ashamed of your sin. I want, you know, uh, they do sensitivity training now on campuses. 
not to uh, not to slut shame is what they call it. Uh, have you heard that term before? Yeah, slut shaming? Yeah. Well, I'm a slut shamer. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, any sluts on this campus, I want you to feel ashamed. Uh, the Bible calls it uh, whoredom or whorish behavior. Whore? Yeah, if you're having premarital sex, you're either a whore or a whoremonger. Yeah, yeah, it's in the Bible. Okay. The Bible, it, it comes from the Greek. Hey, that would be very uh, the Greek word for a whore is porne. Uh, the Greek word for a whoremonger is pornos. And uh, just whoredom is pornea. It's where you get the word porno from. What do you think you're watching when you're watching your porno? You're watching whores and whoremongerers. Uh, what, did, what did you say? Uh, yeah, I can tell. You know, the Bible uh, condemns whorish behavior, and FIU is full of whores and whoremongerers. Yeah, these girls are cheaper than prostitutes. You know, a prostitute will charge, but uh, college girls give it away for free. Well, you know, they do have standards, I suppose. If the guy is, uh, you know, hot, well, then they'll sleep with him. If he's ugly, uh, they might pass. You know, so they, yeah, these girls have standards, sure. You're not a whoremonger, are you? I wouldn't say a whoremonger, but I guess in your eyes, probably. Well, do you have <laughs> premarital sex? Yes. How many girls have you had sex with? What? You've been having sex with men? Yeah. How, how many men have you had sex with? From what time period? Like well, in your lifespan so far, how many men have you had sex with? I'd say probably... Uh, let's just go with an unlucky number. Thirteen? Thirteen? Yeah, Thirteen go. men in your life... life? Uh, Wicked! 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 Well, you know, uh, the average homosexual in their lifespan will have sex with 300 men. And you, sir, are on your way. And that's why the average homosexual dies at the age of 42. Yes, it is. National Health Care Department of the United States. It's a, it's, it's a dangerous lifestyle. It's called a death style. Uh, homosexuality is to die for. God, God might strike you with HIV if he hasn't yet. Uh, well, the fact that you had to be tested uh, just testifies of your depravity. I've never had to be tested for HIV. Because I'm not sleeping around like a whore or a whoremongerer. I'm not sleeping around with strangers. You know. In all kindness, your mother was such a person, you should get tested just in case because you can be born with HIV. Okay. Yeah, you can be born with this. All the more reason why you should live uh, pure and holy, celibate or abstinent until marriage. Uh, uh, your, your, your choices have consequences, even upon your offspring. And, uh, you know, uh, STDs in our society is God's curse upon uh, you for your sexual immorality. Gonorrhea, syphilis, genital herpes, HIV, AIDS. It's God's curse on your genitals. But if you live God's way, you don't have to worry about these judgments. If you live God's way, you don't have to fear. What about, I, I can barely hear you, safe sex? Well, any sex that puts you in hell is not safe sex. A condom can't save you from the flames of hell. Well, so you're a, you're a homosexual, you've had sex with women? A bisexual? Yeah, you're a double-minded man. Yeah.
You smoke marijuana? Very rarely, sadly. <laughs> but at times? At times. Okay. You get drunk on alcohol? Yeah, that I've done a few times. I know, I'm lost, wicked soul. Well, it's a good thing I'm here to set you straight. Oh, no, trust me. You got, you got it's a good oh. thing I'm here. You're wicked, wicked, wicked. And the Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. What's that? Which God? Well, the, the maker of the heavens and the earth. The God who gave you your genitals. The God who designed your reproductive system. And he's angry with you for perverting your nature. Well, Elohim, Adonai, the, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And... Uh, the Bible says, the wicked will be cast into hell and all nations that forget God. And America is a nation that's forgotten God. The election of Barack Obama is proof of that. That's proof that America is wicked, wicked, wicked. Well, I don't want you to, I just want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. You guys, you know, so many college students are dazed and confused. Their mind is half-baked. I need to uh, just emphasize it to make sure they understand. But the election of Barack Obama is proof America is wicked, wicked, wicked. Because he supports, he supports child sacrifices. The slaughter of innocent babies on the altar of abortion. No, no, no. Are you sure? I'm sure. 100%? No, you could sell your daughter in marriage, but you don't sell her into slavery. Uh, not at all. You know, you could, if a man wants to marry your daughter, you could charge. Uh, but you know, uh, that's that's Judaism. That's uh, that's Jewish religion. But uh, Obama supports killing babies in abortion. Now, there's a lot of baby-killing whores on campus. A lot of baby-killing whores uh, in universities and colleges all across America. They want to have premarital sex, and when they get pregnant, they don't want the responsibility of being a mother, so they choose to be a murderer. What do you call someone that kills an innocent baby? Well, I mean, is it a baby yet? Or is of course it's a baby. Like, it's called uh, conception. Conception comes from the Latin, means the beginning of life. Why do you think they have to kill the baby before they take it out? Why don't they just do a C-section and remove the growing mass of uh, tissue? Because if they just... If you do a C-section on a pregnant woman, that baby will come out alive. So they have to kill it before they remove it. So that's not that like later on, isn't that like four or five months into it? No, no, no. Like, I mean, if you have like the, the morning after pill, I, I wouldn't consider that life. Oh, it sure is. It sure is. That's the thing. You guys say we evolved from a single cell amoeba, some uh, single cell organism, and somehow that's life. But then you have a multi-cell uh, fetus in the womb, and you say it's not even alive. The problem is you're not thinking right because you're a selfish sinner. You're not rational. You're irrational. You want to have sex and kill babies. That's what our society has become. You want to fornicate like whores and kill babies like Nazis. Shame. Shame, shame on you. How many of you girls have killed your baby? Raise your hand. How many whoremongers out here paid to have their girlfriend uh, have an abortion? If you ever paid for an abortion, you're just as bad as Obama. Just as bad. 
or anybody like that. But I guess that's not really a case of an issue. Uh huh. You know, I guess that's the only good thing about homosexuality. You guys are so sexually promiscuous and perverted, but at least you don't get pregnant and kill your baby. One plus thing But then you make it worse and adopt a child. Then you make it worse and start adopting kids. You know, I liked it better when I, you know, you guys can't have kids. You can't get pregnant. Hey, that's a plus. I don't trust you guys with children. I don't trust you with kids. You don't, you don't take care of your own body. How are you going to take care of someone else's? You guys are so promiscuous. Your community's dying of HIV. You can't even take care of yourself. How are you going to take care of a child? You're irresponsible, irrational, and selfish. That's why you need to repent. Change your ways. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way. The unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord our God. He will abundantly pardon. So I'm here to give hope to homos today. I have a friend. My friend is homo no mo. He is homo no mo. You see, uh, that's the good news of the gospel. You can change your life by faith in Christ. And God comes and lives inside of you. And He lives through you. And you're not going to be the wicked sinner that you made yourself out to be. Is this your friend here? We've been, we've been chit-chatting uh, th this afternoon. Did you know that he's a homosexual? or a bisexual. Did you know this? He's had sex with 13 men. Allegedly. <laughs> Do you approve of that? What's that? Of course. You d of course. Well, how many men have you had sex with? One. Just one? Are you married? I don't see a wedding ring. Well, you know what the Bible calls that? Whoredom. Yeah, it does. Uh, a woman that has premarital sex is a whore. And uh, do you know what the male counterpart to that is for a man? A whoremongerer. Like, you know, uh, you've heard of a fishmongerer. A fishmongerer is trying to catch fish. Well, a, a whoremongerer is trying to catch whores. And uh, the Bible condemns it. You know how valuable your hymen is? It's... You know what the worth, the value of your virginity is? Uh, marriage. It should cost a man the rest of his life. That's how valuable it is. I, I can't hear what you're saying. The fountain. Uh, oh, a, a woman's virginity is a valuable thing. And you girls make yourself cheaper than prostitutes. Yeah, cheaper than a whore on the street corner. These whores at college. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Now, I'm here to value your soul, to show you, you know, God hates your sin. God's going to judge your sin. God's going to condemn your sin. That's why you need to leave your sin and ask God to forgive you of your sin through Jesus Christ. How long have you been with this fella you've been sleeping with? Two years? Th three years? You've been whoring around for three years? or? Were you, did you sleep with him bef before you were dating? or? No. You didn't sleep with him the first date? No. Six months later. Yeah, whores with standards. You know? Sure. Well, the fact is... I hate to burst your bubble. That man is using and abusing you. He doesn't love you. You're a means to an orgasm. That's all you are. Yeah. You're, um, you're, yeah. 
You're a means to multiple orgasms. That's what you've made yourself. His little uh, uh, dirty whore. Wicked, wicked, wicked. That's what this campus is. You're outside of God's will. You're outside of God's law. You're in violation of your own nature. Well, you were designed by God to be a wife, to be a mother. Your breasts are not toys for frat boys. Your breasts are natural baby bottles. You're supposed to get pregnant, breastfeed your kid, be home with the baby. Well, you know, you pray, God can do miracles. Some women, uh, some women can't get pregnant. Abraham's wife could not get pregnant, but you know what? They kept trying, and uh, Abraham did not mind. Sounds like they're sex lovers. I know. No, no. Of course, sex. You know, sex is meant to be part of the human experience. Uh, God gave you your genitals. Uh, God, God gave you your reproductive system. But you need to use it the way God designed you to use it. And not to be pleasure-seeking whores or pleasure-seeking whoremongerers. Well, like I said, uh, say a woman can't have babies naturally. Uh, she should just keep trying and keep trying and, uh, and pray that God opens her womb. You know, that's, you have uh, instances of that in the Bible. So I'm out here to confront the wickedness and sexual immorality of this campus. Our society has become a society full of whores and whoremongerers and baby killers. And it's a uh, no wonder God is not blessing America like he used to. It's no wonder God is cursing our country. Oh, we, we were founded by pilgrims and Puritans. They wanted religious freedom. But America is under the wrath and judgment of God. No thanks. America is under the wrath and judgment of God. Can I spread my word to you? Here, I'll take one. Let me look at this. Hey, this will this give me some preaching material. America is under the wrath, judgment of God. The Bible says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men. And in America, we have an epidemic. God has cursed this country with plagues, STDs. When God judged Egypt, he cursed them with plagues. And today you have gonorrhea, syphilis, genital heartbeats, HIV, AIDS. How are we? How are we? This is God's curse on your genitals, an epidemic, a plague in society. Well, I used to be a sinner. You're not a sinner anymore? I'm not a sinner anymore. But allow me to introduce myself. My name is my name is Brother Jesse. And I, you might not feel comfortable calling me brother. I understand. If if you don't want to call me Brother Jesse, you can call me Saint Jesse. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. And I'm out here because I'm concerned for your soul. I'm concerned for this campus. I'm concerned for this country. You know, you know how, you know how God judges wicked nations. He punishes them with slavery. When God judged Israel. He sent them as slaves into Babylon. 
and America needs to fear God. Hold on, let me finish my point. In America today, we have sold our children into indentured servitude through our national debt. Through our national debt, we become slaves to China and other foreign countries. And that's the judgment of God. The debt of this country has turned our children and ourselves into slaves. You want me to accommodate your bingo? Yes. 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 Yes, please. Well, we're gonna we're gonna be out here until four o'clock. We're gonna cover most of that. Okay. You know that's the thing about bingo. You have to wait and be patient. You know what I want? I want you sinners to fear God. That's what I want. I want to put the fear of God into your heart and your heart and your heart. I want to strike you with the fear of God. Why is there evil in the world? I want to strike you with the fear of God before God strikes you with HIV. That's what I want to do. Why is there evil in the world? Because by the fear of the Lord, men depart from iniquity. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Hey, don't be so intolerant. Don't discriminate against the Christians. You're discriminating. Well, yeah, to discriminate is to, uh, to separate one from another. To uh, make a distinction between one or another. Oh, yeah, and people discriminate against Christians all the time. People discriminate against me all the time. For example, I came all the way from Texas. And in Texas, in Texas, they just recently uh, overturned our gay marriage ban. You know, uh, some liberal federal judge. And uh, I went out to preach at a equal rights demonstration. And they, they didn't like us being there. They said, you guys stay over there and we will be over here. I said, that's segregation. They're trying to discriminate against us street preachers. I want, I want equality of sidewalk. Hey, that's horrible, that is, right? That is kind of they took away your right to oppress gay people. I'm oh not I'm trying to liberate them from their perversion. I'm not trying to oppress them. I'm trying to liberate them. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, the Bible says. What is freedom? What is free freedom from sin, from bondage to your flesh? Slavery to your appetite and to the devil. I said well, freedom is liberation from uh, captivity. What's liberation? Freedom is the ability to liberation is freedom. freedom you can't is define the word with the word. Liberation and freedom are two different words. They might be synonyms, but they're two different words. The only way you can describe a word is with a synonym. Yeah. I didn't use the word freedom to define freedom. I used the word liberation. Liberation would be the opposite of bondage. There you go. Continue from there. And, uh, you know, the Bible teaches slavery. You guys are slaves to your sin. You're captives of the devil. Your minds are darkened and you're taken captive by the devil to do his will. I'm here as a liberator. 
I'm here to set you free by telling you the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Yes? Well, uh, anyone who's having premarital sex is fornicating, which means they're using and abusing one another. It means they have a wicked heart because they're living like whores and whoremongerers. They're selfish, self-centered, which means they're living just like the devil. And then the homosexuality in our society, these people are killing each other with HIV and AIDS. They just arrested a man in Missouri who was diagnosed with HIV years ago, and he's intentionally slept with some 300 men since then without telling them. That makes him a serial killer. And so you can see this selfish, wicked heart of a sinner is contrary to the well-being of society. So I'm saying whatever you're... Whatever your sin is, it comes from a wicked heart, and you need to change your heart. And you do that by faith in Christ. Yeah, whores and whoremongers give it to each other as well. That's why you ought not to fornicate. You ought not to be, be you ought to be abstinent or celibate until marriage. And then you don't have to worry about STDs. Now, how many of you have STDs? Raise your hand. What? Proud owner, stay positive, optimistic, right? <laughs> One in three college students has an STD. No, that's the latest statistic from the uh, United States government. One in three college students. Look to your left. Look to your right. It might be you. Yes, ma'am. Now, are you serious? You think your prostate is in your rectum? No, it's not. If it was in your rectum, it would, uh, if your prostate was in your rectum, it would be covered with uh, feces. Yeah, you see, it's not, it's not in your rectum. It's outside of your rectum. So you misspoke, and they try to uh, they try to uh, massage the prostate through the walls of the rectum, but you know that can cause that can cause severe damage to your body. And the prostate is outside of the rectum. She said it was inside the rectum. That's mistaken. It's not inside your rectum. It's outside of your rectum. And considering what comes out of your anus, you shouldn't want to put anything in it. Do you have a sexual attraction to feces? Do you have a sexual attraction to, uh, you know, crap? See, God put it up there to keep you perverts from getting near it. He's trying to deter you from abusing it. That's why he put it tucked away. It's not easily accessible. He wants to deter you from abusing it. No. Why not? No. Any of you men that are touching your prostate through your rectum are perverts. Absolute perverts. And uh, putting aside the moral uh, problems with it, just the health detriment alone should deter you from doing it. 
Uh, well, I haven't thoroughly studied it, but I know you can, uh, you can, you can cause, uh, what is it called, content, uh, you know, where you're not able to get it up anymore, what's that called? Yeah, but there's another word for it. Yeah, you could, uh, you could, you can, you can make yourself, uh, impotent. In fact, you could die! I don't know, the ma but I read about it, you, yeah. If you are if you, if you are trying to massage your prostate and uh, you can you can so severely damage your body that you die, you could die from it. Do your homework, college students. Research it. Stop being so wicked. And use your body the way God intended for you to use it for the service of God to be righteous. But what, you'll never do that until you change your heart. You go from being a self-centered to a Christ-centered person. Where you're no longer uh, living carnally minded. Get drunk, get high, get laid. Now you start focusing on what's the will of God for my life. Become spiritually minded through repentance. You know, to, to repent means to change your mind. And the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity with God. Those of you that have your mindset, get drunk, get high, get laid. You're enemies of God. Hey, that could be the motto of FIU. Get drunk, get high, get laid. That's how most of you live your life. I don't think they would actually pass that in any school board. Uh, <laughs> would love it. I, I would not doubt it, actually. Like I said, on Sunday at the pervert parade, FIU had a float in the parade. FIU had a float in the parade. Yeah, I was there. I was preaching. I saw it. They had FIU pride shirts on. I was marching in it with my banner. Yeah. We waited until the very end, and then we, we, we walked the parade route until these intolerant homos almost started a riot. And the police had to get us out of there. They did not accept me as I am. They were not very tolerant and accepting. What's that? Because they almost got violent. I'm trying to help people, not hurt people. You know, I don't tolerate their sin. I try and help them by uh, warning them. But I'm not the one that claims to be tolerant. They are. No, I'm, I'm intolerant, like God is. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because he's an intolerant God. He's a judgmental God. Well, there's like three different versions of God according to the Bible. There's a judgmental God, there's a tolerant God, and then there's you know, God created. Well, there's uh, God. God has various attributes. He's just and merciful. He's holy and righteous. You know, and uh, as he sees fit, he exercises the various attributes of his character. You know, when uh, when it's permitted according to public justice. He exercises mercy. When it's necessary, according to public justice, he exercises judgment and wrath. So you can determine which one is actually Well, it's God, it's up to God's discretion when he exercises uh, his various attributes. And God says, if you don't repent, you will perish. So God is God will be merciful if you change your mind about your rebellion. Put your faith in Christ who died for you, who shed his blood for you. But if you reject Jesus Christ and continue in sin, it's judgment, wrath, and hell. That's what God sees fit to do. Now, I'm not part of Westboro Baptist Church. They're Calvinist. Uh, they don't believe in free will. I believe in free will. They believe it's already predestined 
Who goes to heaven? Who goes to hell? I believe that it's open. I believe they believe that if you're a homosexual, you cannot change. You're given over. You're reprobate. I believe you can choose to be homo no mo. No, you're not born with sexual desires. That develops at puberty. And if you're molested as a child, that might pervert your sexual development. You know, a lot of, a lot of lesbians have male phobia because they were abused by men. But it's obvious a lot of these lesbians are attracted to men. Their girlfriends look like boys. No, the ones that intentionally look like boys who marry feminine lesbians, they were abused by men, so they're trying to toughen up, shave their heads, act masculine, because, you know, they've been hurt. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's, their, that's their, con their mental conditioning there. And, of course, these homosexual men were also abused by uh, men as children. And that's why they're uh, so perverted now. But you choose your lifestyle. You choose it. And you can choose to obey the temptation of the devil. What denomination are you guys? I'm just, I'm just a normal Christian. Okay. No, you're not. Yeah. I'm just a born-again Christian. I'm a normal Christian. I would say you're at least a slight radical. You see, uh, the devil's going to come and tempt you and say, you know, hey, uh, hey, Susie, you're a lesbian. Hey, Jimmy, you're a queer. Hey, Bobby, why don't you smoke some marijuana? Hey, asshole, why don't you come and blaspheme about the Did he just insinuate that I am a sphincter muscle? Well, he needs to study human biology. And when the devil comes to tempt you, you need to say, No, devil! Say, No, devil! And choose not to obey temptation. Resist the devil, and he will flee. What? Hey, the Bible says God hates the wicked. Study your Bible. Psalms 5, 5. What's that? I'll get to that. Read Psalms 5, 5. It says, Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So when the devil comes to tempt you, tries to make you a sinner, say no, you don't want to come under the hatred of God. You don't want to come under the anger of God. You don't want to come under the judgment of God. And, the, and instead of trusting the devil and obeying the devil, obey and trust God. Uh, he had a question. What do I think about abortion? How many of you support abortion? Raise your hand. You're worse than the Nazis. You are worse than the Nazis. Even the even the even the Germans, even the Nazis did not kill their own children. They might have killed other people's children, but not their own. You, you abortionists, you uh, whorish women are killing your own babies. You're worse than Nazis. Yes. Ah, she said. All right, this just shows the lack of rational thinking on this campus. She said, what if a woman is raped? Well, murdering that baby will not erase the memory of that rape. You're going to have those mental scars from that rape anyways. But you're going to you're going to add you're going to add injury to your wound there. 
by now having mental uh, scars and pains of conscience of an abortion. You're going to make it worse. It's not a blob of tissue. Otherwise, just have a C-section and take it out. They have to kill it in the womb first. Because if they have a cesarean, the baby comes out alive. As far as I'm concerned, if you are going to pay to help that poor baby, then don't... Hey, put it up for adoption. Yeah, put it up for adoption if you uh, can't afford it. There's people that'll want it. Furthermore... You know what's worse than being a rapist? You know what's worse than being a rapist? A blasphemer. What's worse than a rapist is a murderer. And if you have an abortion, you become worse than the rapist. You go from being the victim to being the criminal. Don't be a murderer, be a mother. That's your child, your offspring, your baby. Like it or not, want it or not, that's your child. Are you a father? Yes. Father of three. Yeah. You whorish women keep having your abortions. Us Christians, us Christians are going to keep having babies and we're going to take over the world. You're going to destroy your own wicked culture through abortion. Us Christians are going to have big family like the Duggards, and we're going to be dominant. Yes, love, love, love. If you're a baby-killing whore, you are not loving. If you're having an abortion, you are not loving. If you're fornicating and having premarital sex, you are not loving. <laughs> yeah, loud mouth women can leave. Thank you. Thank you. Why did she bring race into it? What did she say about being black? Jesus was not black. Actually, Jesus had no colors. Jesus was not transparent. Yes, he was. No, there. He was not transparent either. Jesus was not African. He was not European either. Jesus was Jewish. Yeah, Jesus was Jewish. That doesn't mean he couldn't be black. I don't. He was not from Africa. He was from uh, Galilee. They are black Cubans. No, they're 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 African Americans. Are they not? Do you not call yourself African Americans? There's a nationality and then there's an ethnicity. And then there's a race. Which well, is I under, yeah, your ethnicity would be African American. Jesus was not an African American. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. He might, hey, he might have had dark skin. But he was not black. And truth is, you guys aren't black. You're kind of brown. You know, a dark brown. If you want to talk about color, color, you guys are dark brown. I'll put it this way. If I walk into a room, you ain't going to call me big, you're going to call me black. You're, you're, you're like slightly tanned. I'm going to call him black. I'm going to just leave you. You're very, you're very light brown. Can I call you light red? Slightly tanned. Light red? Is that the proper term? Slightly red. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really white. I'm red. Yeah. We're talking about color. Jesus was not black. Most people are not black. Uh, most Africans are not black. They're dark brown or light brown. It's not an accident. Most white people aren't white. What the fuck are you? That's what I just said. That's what I just said. That's what I just said. I I don't know about that. Yeah, he might have had some. I I've read. That. And you know I'm I'm part black as a matter of fact. I believe it. Yeah, I'm part. I have some dark freckles. But yeah, I'm I'm just partially black in my color. We're all black. Yeah. When the lights go off. <laughs> You're right, man. Yeah, the black thing is off.
You my brother. Jesus was a Jew, hallelujah. He's the Jewish Messiah, but he wants to save Gentiles. I am a Gentile, and I, I'm here to testify that Jesus Christ has saved my soul and changed my life. I used to be a sinner. I used to sin every day. I used to get drunk and get high and make money out of criminal means. But Jesus Christ has saved my soul and changed my life. Hallelujah. Yes. I choose not to sin. By faith in God. By uh, loving God. By fearing God, I choose not to sin. But hey, I could sin if I wanted to. I could go out and get drunk, get high, and get laid if I wanted to. But I choose not to. I put down the bong and I picked up the Bible. I put down the bottle and I picked up the Bible. I put down the bottle and picked up a microphone. What sin do you have in your life? Every ever since you've been saved, you haven't sinned since. Well, I'm not sinning now. I respect that. Yeah. I have sinned in the past. I no no no. I could sin in the future, but I'm not sinning now. I have a heart of obedience to God. What's the state of your heart today? Well, it gets easier. It gets easier. You know, when I first became a Christian, Friday night would come around and, you know, that was always party night. So I might have been tempted to go, you know, hang out with the boys. But, uh, but you know, I resisted the temptation to go to the keg party. I resisted the temptation to get drunk. And now I can preach in front of a bar and not even think about going in. Because it gets easier over time. You got sin in your life? Stop it. Stop sinning. The Bible says it. You know the good news? Here's some good news. You don't have to be a sinner anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You don't have to be wicked anymore. You can be born again. You can be changed and transformed. You don't have to be a whore. You don't have to be a whoremonger. You don't have to be a drunkard. You don't have to be a, a filthy, rotten, dirty sinner anymore. You can be changed. You can be transformed by faith in Christ. The Bible says, By the fear of the Lord, men depart from iniquity. And our faith, we, by our faith, we overcome the world. The devil comes and he tempts me. And by faith in God, I resist. Well, uh, what sin do you have in your life? You, you go clubbing? You don't dirty dance with those girls backing it up in the club? You listen to gangster rap music? I listen to gospel rap music. Hey, that's okay. You listen to gangster rap music? I want to put the fear of God into your hearts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You need to fear God, woman. You need to fear God. Fear God. Fear God. I want to strike you with the fear of God before God strikes you with his judgment. Well, I'm showing both today. Love for souls, love for God, hate for sin. We need more hatred on this campus. Hatred for sin. Well, I love the sinner, but I hate the sin. God's going to condemn the sinner on Judgment Day. I'm not here to condemn you. I have not sent anyone to hell today. I have not sent anyone to hell. I'm here.
here to warn you about the condemnation of God. God's going to condemn the whores. God's going to condemn the whoremongers. God's going to condemn the drunkards. And this idea that only God can judge me, that's a Tupac lyric, not a Bible verse. can judge you too. Hey, sir. And they can come to my college and tell me that I'm doing shit wrong and that God doesn't fucking love me. Watch your language. You, you cuss. You cuss like a gangster rapper. Hey, sir. What do you want to do? Hey, sir. Rock. Hey, sir. Rock. Hey, Did you say that if you sing, God doesn't love you? Well, in a sense, uh, God's don't love is sin. conditional. In a sense, uh, God hates the wicked. That's what the Bible says. Uh, God, God, does not, God does not take a personal delight in the wicked. He, he, but he doesn't hate the wicked. Well, that's a type of hatred. To not enjoy, to not dislike, uh, to not enjoy, to be abhorred by. God is abhorred by the wicked. Okay, he doesn't hate the wicked. Well, abhorrence is the strongest uh, word for hatred. But, uh, but God has a good will. God would rather save a soul than to damn us all. But God doesn't damn us all, we damn us all. You choose. Yeah, in a sense, you damn yourself by being a sinner. Okay. But on Judgment Day, you know what he's going to say? Bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Hey, sir, I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. You a pretty lady walking past you. Ah, that's your sin. You got a lustful eye. You got a lustful eye. Is that why you're wearing sunglasses? So you can look around without anyone noticing? Ah, ah, okay. Hey, are you going to teach? Yeah. I choose not to lust after these lusty hussies. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, since 2006. Uh, well, I'm going to quote a Bible verse. The Bible says, let the breast of your wife satisfy you always. That's a Bible verse. No. Jesus said, if you so much as look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery with her in your heart. All right, I'm gonna read some you know what? I went out to South Beach where there's all these whores wearing bikinis. What about if I look at a sandwich and lust? You That's true, no, no, no. And, and I did not lust after those women. Hallelujah. I did not. By faith in God, by fear in God, by love in God, I chose not to sin. Have at it, buddy. James, James, the book of James, chapter 3, verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. He's teaching us right now. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. That's why you need a savior. That's why you need a savior, a preacher. That's why. And what's his name? What's his name? Jesus Christ. Is he holy? Does he command you to be holy? Here's another word, buddy. Hey, you're wrong. You're wrong. Testimony. Hey, hey, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey, hey. He's testimony. Wait. Everybody shut up. Okay, let me let me testify. Shut up. 
Let me give you my testimony. I I have a confession to make. You want details, man? Details. Details. That's a big story. The details. I have not always been a saint. Of course. I used to be a sinner. It all started back in 1984. I was born in the rough streets of Connecticut. Come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And uh, I was, but I was, I was not born a sinner. I was born a baby. Yeah, an innocent baby. Babies are innocent. But I did not stay innocent forever. You see, when I was in the fifth grade, I came home from elementary school. I snuck into my family's liquor cabinet and I stole a bottle of Captain Morgan rum. So there, in the fifth grade, I started pounding shots of hard liquor. And I didn't stop there, I got worse. Come on, man. I went to the sixth grade. And in the sixth grade, the sixth grade summer, my parents hired a babysitter to watch us. An older senior girl from high school. And she would wear belly shirts with her belly button pierced. Okay, okay, keep going, man. But that's not the only thing she had pierced. She had her tongue pierced. That's not the only thing she had pierced. She had her nipples pierced. And that's not the only thing she had pierced. She had her lip pierced. I'm not talking about her face. I'm not talking about her face. And uh, I thought she was a, a hottie. I thought, uh, you know, she was an attractive girl. And she would tell us about how she would go on the weekends to these keg parties at the beach. And I thought that was pretty cool. Well, there, that summer, sixth grade summer, I went over to my neighbor's house and they stole a bottle of 90 proof vodka. And I took, I pounded six shots of 90 proof. And I thought my babysitter would be impressed. I thought she might think I was cool. Okay. But you know what? What? She didn't think I was cool. She felt like a bad babysitter. But it was worse than that. She was a bad person. Yeah, she was a bad person because she would boast about alcohol to a little child. And under her influence, I was becoming a terrible sinner. Yeah, bad choice. Don't hire a babysitter that wears belly shirts. Don't hire a babysitter that wears belly shirts. At the start of your speech, you said sin is a choice. Oh yeah, I chose under bad influences. Now I didn't stop there. I got worse. You got worse, huh? Yes, I went into the seventh grade. Moment. And in the seventh grade, I started listening to gangster rap music. That was your first mistake, my that's And that's a bad influence upon a vulnerable mind. Oh, in seventh grade, what are you? Oh, 29. Too damn old. He's too damn old. This would have been, uh, this would have been 98. And under the influence of gangster rap music, I started puffing on blunts and sipping on gin and juice with my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Yeah. 
In fact, in the seventh grade, I had my first homemade bomb. I made it out of an alien water bottle. You know what color aliens are? Green. You know what else is green? Marijuana. So I, I converted, I converted this alien water bottle into a bong. And being the pothead that I was, I gave my bong a name. Take a guess. Hey, that was, that's good. That's not it, but that's good. The green, the green, uh, green lantern. Because it was an alien, I named my bong Spaced Out! Because that's what we would do on that bong! We would get spaced out! In fact, after school, we would all go into the woods and, and it was called Puff Puff Pass. Puff Puff Pass. And some girls came with us. And they were lightweights. So you know what happened when these girls got high? Their eyes got bloodshot. Their minds were dazed and confused. And they, they took their clothing off. Right there in the woods in front of us all. Well, they did not feel ashamed or embarrassed. After all, they were high. Word got around school the next day. I mean, we were telling everybody. And uh, they felt embarrassed, ashamed, humiliated. They felt like sluts. And you know why they felt like sluts? Because they were sluts. If you feel like a slut, you probably are. That's big, though. That's big, though. And, uh, but under the influence of marijuana, they didn't feel ashamed. So girls, if these boys try and pass the blunt to you, just say no. Don't take it. This girl smokes marijuana. And she's wearing a belly shirt. Watch out, watch out for this girl, she's a wild one. Watch out for this girl. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Okay. You know why guys want to hug you, right? It's not because they love you. You know why. You're a married man and you're mar you're hugging a girl like that? Does your wife know? Hugged her sexually? It was not an A-frame hug. That was a full frontal hug. A full frontal. Okay, back to the Brother Jesse story. I did not stop there in the seventh grade. I went to the eighth grade. And in the eighth grade, under the influence of gangster rap music, I started to sell drugs in my middle school. Well, I started making money selling drugs. No, my father's homeless. My mother's a single mom. Right, yeah, I had to hustle. Yeah, I was hustling. And, uh,. So I started making lots of money. Do we have any business majors in the crowd? Well then, what kind of industry are you getting into? Porno? Well, uh, as you business majors know, supply and demand, when the demand is great and the supply is rare, the prices go up. And since I was the only drug dealer in school, and these kids didn't know the difference between a dime bag and a nickel bag, I made a lot of money. And so there I am, smoking blunts, drinking 40s, 
selling drugs, making money, living the thug life. Eighth grade. I was suspended from school 38 and a half times. Yeah. That one year, 38 and a half times. That was a half a day suspension for the half. I was also experimenting with uh, the magic mushrooms and popping tabs of acid like they were M&Ms. But I didn't stop there. I got even worse. I went into the ninth grade. A freshman in high school. And I was not only smoking marijuana every day, the fatty fillies, the Garsha Greenleafs, the Dutch masters. I was uh, not only getting drunk every night on uh, the 40s and the 64s and the Hennessy, and I was not only eating the magic mushrooms and tripping on acid, I started to smoke methamphetamines. I started to get wet on PCP to pop. Well, you know, by, by 2000, Eminem was out. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he was into popping pills. And so I started to pop uh, ecstasy and uh, even smoke some crack cocaine. My ninth grade year. That's what you should listen to gangster rap. They said crack. To uh, to support my crack habit, I got involved in some uh, uh, credit card and check scandals. I was involved in an FBI investigation, and we used to steal crack from the Latin Kings. That was a a, a gang in Connecticut. In fact, in the ninth grade, I was convicted of my first felony. I got into a fist fight with a senior in high school, and I, uh, I, I hit him in the head with a Corona beer bottle. So that was assault in the second degree, my first felony. Wait, you smoke crack in that grade? Yeah. We used, we used to mix it with, with uh, wet, you know, PCP. Okay, okay. You get the glasses done? School done? No, no, I went to school to sell drugs, that's it. That's it. That's it. Remember, this, this is the rough streets of Connecticut. That's how we get down. This was in uh, 2000. 2000? Yeah. Oh, boy. How old are you? Yeah, I was listening to uh, Tupac and Biggie and Eminem and, and uh, DMX. They smoke crack? Well, no, you never get high off your own supply. They sell it. Uh, but, you know... Uh, I guess, uh, but yeah, I, I did. As, and as a matter of fact, my freshman year in high school, I got my neck slit in a knife fight. Gave me a permanent scar. Right, it goes from here to the back. No, he's got it. I'm not fronting. And, uh, fact, by the time I was 16 years old, I had been in 24 separate street fights. My knuckles were always broken. They never had time to heal. Sure. Yeah, this knuckle broke a lot. Yeah, that's pretty big. I haven't fought for 10 years, but... Yeah? Yeah. And, uh... I was on house arrest three times that year. One time when I was locked up, I heard a hell fire preacher. Yes. And uh, he was a big, loud, black man. But he was a black, so he was brown. Hey, good point. Come on now. Yeah, he was a big black, uh, or big brown preacher. Lights in. Well, he was dark. And, uh, but so I'm locked up. And they were having a meeting in the lobby. I was not invited because I was in a fist fight a few days earlier, so they didn't let me out of my cell. But he was so loud that I could hear him from my cell. And he had all these inmates there in the lobby. 
and he, he talked about how he used to be a criminal okay. and Jesus changed his life wow. and that got my attention okay. and he said how many of you believe when you die you're gonna go to heaven okay. and I thought that was a very bold question to ask so I got up out of my bunk bed yeah. I looked out of the little uh, window on the cell and I saw all the inmates had their hands raised Ooh. they all thought they were gonna go to heaven when they died now these were uh, gang members and drug dealers and burglars and they thought they were gonna go to heaven and I saw how ignorant that was everybody thinks they're going to heaven everybody thinks they're gonna make it and then I looked at myself I realized here I am I'm selling drugs doing drugs fist fighting hurting people and I thought I was gonna go to heaven and for the first time in my life I realized I was on my way to hell 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 on my way to hell when we repeat that last part H E L L hell what was the breaking point between that and when you transferred over well that's a good question see I got I got shot in the heart with the arrow of conviction Wait. I got shot in the heart with the Word of God and I'm wounded in my conscience I know that I'm wrong I know that I'm hellbound I know that I'm not right with God so you know what I did when I got out I bought a 40 and packed a blunt and try to get so high and so drunk that I could try and tend to the wound. Okay. But no matter how high I got, no matter how drunk I got, I couldn't shake it. That's true. I knew I was under the wrath of God. I knew I was going to hell. You it. And I knew I was living a life close to death. You already knew. So I realized what's going to happen to me when I die, I'm going to be judged and I'm going to go to hell. And I was in the torment of my conscience. So I ended up robbing a house. Hey, were you ever homeless? Uh, no. Well, yeah, for a few weeks. I ended up robbing a house, violating house arrest. They, uh, they picked me up for violating house arrest, and I was under an investigation for larceny in the first degree. That would have been my second felony, and in one year, and I was facing five to ten years in prison. Five to ten. So now I realized my life, you know, I, man, I wanted to live the good life. You know, like, uh, like you see in uh, Scarface or uh, Goodfellas or, uh, you know, Casino. I was trying to be happy through sin. But I realized now my life of sin was tending to misery, death, and prison and hell. It was not tending to happiness. So I realized I had a problem, I had a big problem. And I was so addicted to drugs, I could not imagine going cosmic bowling without tripping on LSD. I thought, man, that would be boring. I could not function and live without drugs. I didn't know how to be sober anymore. I'm high on the Holy Ghost. I was be not drunk on wine, be full of the Spirit. I'm sober mind. Okay. So I started praying, God, help me. Help me. I told God, God, if you will get me out of this, I will serve you. But I realized, you know what? I'm not going to make a deal with God. I'm living wrong. I'm wicked. I'm sinful. God, even if I have to go to prison for five to ten years, I'm going to serve you. I'm gonna I'm gonna live for you even if I live behind bars well I ended up getting transferred to a rehab because I had violated probation five times with five dirty drug tests all with marijuana one with cocaine so they transferred me to a rehab and in rehab I saw a person reading a big black book and I said is that is that a Bible they were surprised that I asked. 
because like I said back then my knuckles were always broken the scar on my neck was red and fresh I always bicked my head looked like a skinhead and they were surprised a guy like me would want would want to know about the Bible but they said yeah that this is the Bible I said can I borrow that can I borrow that when you're done so I read the Bible how many of you have ever read the Bible once or twice in your life just a few of you well, uh, you see, I was not only a drug dealer, street fighter, gangster rapper, uh, I was also a good Catholic, which means I never read the Bible. I just believed whatever I was taught in church. And so I opened up the Bible, and you know what I read? I read that you should sacrifice a dove on the first of every month and break its neck and spill its blood on the altar. And I thought, when do the priests do that? After Mass? I've never seen that done. But a man explained to me, Old Testament, New Testament, animal sacrifice, atonement of Christ. So I realized Christ died for me as hell deserving as I am. As wicked as I am Christ died for me and Jesus said you must be born again how many of you have ever heard about born again Christians before you have now coming from a Catholic family I was told stay away from born again Christians they're fanatics they're radicals they're extremists stay away from born-again Christians but then I read what Jesus said that unless a man is born again he will not see the kingdom of God so I got down and I cried out to God and I said God save my soul change my life and I have not been the same since Jesus did a wonderful work in my life even the counselors at rehab they were not Christians they said Jesse you you look different they said they said when you first got here it was like a dark presence was on you but now your face your eyes it's like you're glowing what happened and I said, I've been born again. Jesus Christ has saved my soul. Praise the Lord. So I put down the blunts. I put down the bong. I put down the bottles. And I picked up the Bible. Any questions so far? Yes. That was a good testimony. I think it was good. But I still need to know the transfer. When you were talking, you missed it. He said, what was your tipping point? What was that point where... Well, first I heard a hellfire preacher. Then I read the Bible. Okay. You know, I realized I was going to hell. And then I learned that Jesus died for me. And that, I, that there was hope. I could change. I could be born again. And if I'm born again, I'll be forgiven. So I asked God to save my soul. I asked God to change my life. I said what was called the sinner's prayer. And, uh, and I, I renounced my sin committed my life to Christ. Okay. Yes. Which is good. It was very good. But like, you coming here and saying all non-homemakers are God will judge by us all non-homemakers are going to hell. Of course, not are going to hell. Well, well, a rebellious woman would be, you know, like these feminists who don't want to submit to their husbands. You know, and then there's girls who rebel against their fathers. Girls who rebel against the government. Just rebellious women. We live in a culture of rebellion. You know, they, they rebel against nature. This is 06. Do you ever talk about divorce with your wife? No. Never think about it. It's not on the table. Why would she want to divorce a guy like me? I respect that. I respect that. Why would a woman want to divorce a godly man? Hey, do y'all argue? 
Uh, well, no, she, uh... Don't lie now. You know, uh, she's, she's learning her role as a wife to submit uh, to me as, uh, you know, the husband. Now, I, uh, I don't keep her in silence all the time. You know, uh, I, I let her talk. Uh, I, 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 I like to hear her opinion and make my decision with uh, her input. Yes. Okay, false religions would be like the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Muslims. Well, I mean, it's a real religion, but it's a fake real religion. No, uh, the problem is, uh, Muhammad contradicted every other prophet in the Bible and uh, started listening to demons. He said, Allah has no begotten son. The prophet Jesus said he was the son of God. And Buddha, some of you college students are just as bad as the Buddhists. Buddha didn't claim divine inspiration. He didn't claim, uh divinity hey, he just started making things up one day hey, sir. and that's what many of you college students do you're just as bad as the Buddhists hey, sir, how old are you? 29 you're 29 everybody was over like 20 21 you said when you were 21 22 you were wild right? no 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 you're wild no I was not I was a Christian by then I was street preaching at 17 but still man you're not perfect you have sin you have, you have... don't judge me I'm saying you're not perfect that's a judgment I'm not dumb. I know that. I am perfect in Jesus Christ. Okay, sir. Okay, but look. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old is past, the new is come. I am perfect in my heart because of the change that Jesus brought in my life. You will sin to the day you die. No, you're, you've been lied to. Who told you that? Your pastor? Yes. You don't have to sin every day of your life. You don't have to sin until you die. I call this girl a whore. You don't even know her. I still. I all. No, I did not actually. I did not call her a whore. I said, if you recall, I said this girl smokes marijuana and she has a belly shirt. How do you know? And then when she said she's a business major. I, I asked a question. I said, I said, what biz? I said, what business are you gonna get into, porno? Question mark. I don't, I don't want to be accusational. I asked her a question. Hey sir, are you a virgin? Keep it up. Hey sir, are you a freshman? That explains it. Do you remember? Do you remember when uh, the woman? God said, he without sin cast the first stone. Yes. He didn't go to that girl and say, you're a slut, you make porno. Like, I didn't that. say that, I asked her. It was an honest Look. inquiry. Look, I believe in Christ. No. You do too. Well, so, but what else did... Brother, I'm so happy to see you here. Praise you. the Lord. Yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> what else did Jesus say to that woman? He said, go and sin no more. No one she was going to sin more. No, no, no. You added that. You're adding that. She's not perfect. You can be perfect. What sin can't you stop doing? Which one? Living. Living's not a sin. Jesus was alive. He is alive. As long as we live, we're If living is a sin, the resurrection was a sin. Getting angry. Resurrection is a sin. God is angry. Ang the Bible says, be angry and sin not. But Anger is not a sin. I'm angry at the devil. When I read the news and I hear about the rapes, the murders, the molestations, I get angry. And I'm just reading the highlights. God sees it all. And God is more angry than I am. Anger is not a sin in and of itself. There's not a single sin you can't stop doing. There's not a single sin Jesus Christ can't save you from. The power of His grace is greater than the power of sin. By the grace of God and your free will, you can overcome the devil, overcome the world, overcome the flesh, overcome sin. You ought to get angry at sin, or else you're not godly.
Do we have any questions so far? What's that? I still can't hear you. Now, why is Islam a bad thing? Isla Islam, Islam. He said, okay, uh, why is Islam a bad thing? He asked, why is Islam bad? Islam's not bad? Is it okay to kill homosexuals? Islam does. Islam does. You're full of contradictions. Hey, woman, where's your burqa? Yeah, well, they... The way that you're dressed, if you were that way in the Middle East, they would stone you. Is that good or bad? Oh, Islam's a religion of peace? Oh yeah, Islam is good. No, you're 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 confused. They would kill you, woman. You said Islam is good. No, 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 no. You can't say it's it's bad to kill homosexuals. You're clapping for nonsense. She said, she said, Islam is good. It's bad to kill homosexuals. And yet Islam kills homosexuals. That's not coherent. That's not coherent. The fact is, if you were in the Middle East, they would kill you for wearing your short shorts and not having a burqa. But Muhammad said, Allah has no begotten son. The Bible says God so loved the world they gave, that he gave his only begotten son. So Islam is a total denial of the gospel. A total contradiction of Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. And the Quran says kill the infidel. Do you think that Do you live in chance? Huh? Do you believe in chance? Chance? Yeah, I believe in chance. You do? Oh, yeah. The Bible teaches by chance a, a, a certain man. It's by the will by. of God. No, 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 no. The Bible says by chance in one passage. Oh, 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 sorry. Uh, do you remember this, the parable Jesus gave of uh, the man that was uh, beaten on the side of the road? And uh, everyone kept passing yeah, by him. Yeah, and, and, and Jesus said, and by chance, a certain man came who was, uh, I believe, like a Samaritan. Was a Samaritan. The good Samaritan. Yeah. So the Bible says, by chance. Yeah, I don't believe, not everything is a uh, predestination. There is a free will, which gives this, this element of contingency. Is that, that whether it is evil? Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions so far? Question. Yes. Do you feel like you would get more people to believe when telling them that they would be burned in hell and all this or with the good news? That Jesus loves you. Jesus is here for you. There, there's somebody that, that wants you, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that cares well, uh, about you, care about yourself. Then, oh, you sin, you're going to hell. Uh -huh. Like, what, you, what, you'll get more flies with vinegar or honey? What, 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 what? Well, fruit flies like uh, vinegar. You want fruit flies or do you want... Well, I don't want. I'm, not, I'm a fisher of men. I'm not a fly catcher. I'm a, I'm a fisher of men, and this is spear fishing. What is sin? This is spear fishing. What is sin? A sin is a choice of the will. Now, uh, the good news will not make any sense without the bad news. You need to realize that you're a hell-deserving sinner to realize why you need Jesus Christ. Are you a fisher of men? Yeah. Me too. Oh. Well, I'm trying to save them, not damn them. Now, uh, it's only in light of your damnation that you will see your need of salvation. Hey, Emmanuel, you see who wants to preach next, if anyone wants to come up next. And uh, so I need to convince you of the disease before you'll take the cure. So, hey, sir. Do you think you need to tell these people that having sex with all these dudes is wrong? These girls know that 
They just, they do it, no, that's how they, that's what they do. You don't need to tell them that it's wrong, they know it's wrong. Well, so these girls have sex with guys and they feel so bad about it. Like, they don't need to read the Bible to know that it's wrong. Now these girls are boasting of it. What about their father? And they don't know. They have no, they have no father, no Some father. of these girls didn't know that they were whores until I told them. They're lying. They didn't know. Bro, they yeah, didn't know. Bro, she knew it. They no. thought a whore was a prostitute. Bro, a prostitute? No, she's a prostitute. But a whore is anyone that has premarital sex, or a whoremongerer would be the male counterpart. Hey, hey, you know what? Respect for the Bible, huh? Respect. Yeah, I'm a Bible thumper. So I'm out here. I'm out here to convince you about what wicked, evil sinners you have made yourselves to convince you how hell-deserving you really are, that you might see how gracious it is for God to offer you eternal life, how merciful it is for God to forgive you. God is merciful in proportion to how much you deserve hell. God is gracious in proportion to how much you deserve damnation. Yes? An atheist is someone that claims that there is no God, but everyone knows naturally that there is a God. Unless you're mentally handicapped, you have the uh, mental capacity to see all of the design and order that's in the universe, and design and order is indicative of of mind, of intelligence, of God. God is obvious. The problem is not everyone trusts in God. Not everyone obeys God. But His existence is obvious. You mean to tell me that every living creature on this planet that has the ability to reproduce magically evolved that ability without any intelligence uh, at all? That's nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> you atheists, you atheists try and mock the Bible because of uh, Balaam's donkey that talked, and you say, that's nonsense, that's a fairy tale. But uh, if there is a God, a miracle is not impossible. But in atheism, there is no God, and we're all a bunch of talking animals. That's nonsense. Well, stop it. Stop denying the God that you know exists. Stop having sex with men. <laughs> they said he had sex with 13 men already in his life. It's awful. Now that guy who just left. Well, he confessed it and I'm concerned he might get stricken with HIV. And being the loving guy that I am, I don't want that to happen. Jason, do you want to preach or? Do you, do you want to preach? Who's up next? Oh, oh okay. Do you, oh, Doug? Doug, do you want to preach?